are a Bitcoin yeah. investor, but we're going to take a look at the future of money. Things, they are changing. We're going to take a look at what the, the mm. future horizon looks like when it comes to trade and money. It's going to be mm. interesting because Bitcoin has been quiet for yeah. a while now, ever since that big boom coming back. a yeah. while back. But yeah, it's back and it's going to be interesting to see where it's heading. But then we're also focusing on our beautiful elephants, something we are proud of. Um, poaching as an all-time high at this stage, but we are going to be talking to a leader in the field with regards to what can be done to look after these magnificent, majestic animals. Yeah, I think our capability is also at an all-time high, so all is not lost. But let's get the day officially underway with those news headlines. This is a high five for you. Bam. <laughs> Uh, good morning, team, and good morning to you at home. Let's take a look at what's making news headlines. In the national news, land expropriation, South Africa's ailing economy, and gender-based violence are some of the issues that are expected to be discussed during the Cabinet Lakhotla in Pretoria this week. Communications Minister Norm Vula Mokonyane said that plans on how to implement land expropriation without compensation will be discussed. Last week, the ANC's National Executive resolved to amend the Constitution to allow for expropriation without compensation. Mokonyane said Cabinet will also develop a stimulus package for the economy, which will primarily focus on the inclusion of women and young people. The Deputy Minister in the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Andre Snell, says through the Municipal Infrastructure Support Agent, they've been working intensely with the bottom third municipalities that lack the capacity to render basic services to help them out of the distressed state that they can get, uh, or rather, that they can get the basics right. Uh, they are working together with national departments and provincial treasuries to further diagnose the problems in those municipalities and to develop recovery plans. Now moving further abroad, at least 34 people are reported to have died in a fresh outbreak of Ebola in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The dead include a healthcare worker, the World Health Organization said. Now officials are scrambling to contain the deadly virus in the rest of eastern part of the country. It's been confirmed to be the Zaire strain of the virus and vaccinations of health workers may start as early as today. It is the 10th Ebola outbreak in the country. And then finally, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has told Zimbabwe's President Emerson Mnangagwa in a telephone conversation that he must rein in his security forces after six people were killed in election violence. UN spokesperson Farhan Haq said yesterday. Guterres also spoke by phone with opposition leader Nelson Chamisa to urge him to turn to the courts and not the streets if he plans to challenge Mnangagwa's election victory. The Secretary General made it clear that he was counting on Mnangagwa to ensure that the security forces show maximum restraint. And of course, this is according to the sources. Well, that was your six o'clock news update. Here's a look at what's happening in the very exciting world of sport as Graham just is so excited for it. Here he is. <laughs> There was some fist pumping in the background. Let's get into that uh, sporting lineup this morning. And of course, we uh, pick up with the Proteas. Form being rewarded and an opportunity to build a senior leadership team in the absence of Faf Duplessis for the rest of the Proteas tour of Sri Lanka. Given his first leadership role in the senior setup, Quinton de Kock will captain the side for the remainder of the ODIs. The team pushed for that whitewash, starting with a win today in Candy. Match kicking off at 11 before closing it out on Sunday in Colombo. That's where they'll stay for the T20s with JP Dumini leading the tour's batting charts already with 177 runs taking over the captain's reins. Then on to the PSL. Our champions, Mamelodi Sundowns, have their first win under the belt, beating Polokwane City 2 0. Nascimento netting his second in as many games, and Lebohang Mabue getting his first for the Brazilians. That while Bidvest, Vitz cruised to a 3 1 dominance of Kaiser Chiefs at FB last night. Knowing the value of early points when mounting a title campaign, convincing strikes from Hoto, Zuvoka Manja, and Matupa opening some space for the clever boys at the top of the early table. On the other end of a very unforgiving spectrum, pressure already mounting on Chiefs new coach Giovanni Salinas. In tonight's, of course, Free State Stars take on Maritzburg, Barocca entertain Cape Town City Pirates. They travel to Nelson Mandela Bay to face Chippa and Supersport, take on Amazulu at the Lucas Moripa Stadium. And after Masatsansa's season opening loss to Cape Town City, their new commander-in-chief, Kaito Tembo, is still adamant they've got some shopping to do before the transfer window closes at the end of the month. And speaking of transfers, even less time available to the English Premier League teams, most notably Chelsea's new manager Maurizio Sarri, who now has under two days to find a replacement for Thibaut Courtois as the Belgian international failed to report to training. 
and is now widely expected to move to Real Madrid. Also linked to the Spanish giants, at least fellow countryman Eden Hazard has been spotted at training. And while Leicester City and Man United get the league underway at Old Trafford on Friday, Chelsea, they'll open their accounts on a bumper roster on Saturday against Giants laying Huddersfield at the John Smith Stadium. That's where we leave our sport for now. After 6 o'clock, let's quickly take a first look at your weather and your temperatures going into your Wednesday. And it looks like a chilly start for most parts of the country, especially down in the western parts uh, because of some snowfall as well as that we, that we saw over the mountains, ranges. And Sutherland starting off on minus 4 this morning, so stay warm out there. Polokwane this morning, 9 minimum with a maximum 23. Mombela, 11, 18. Pretoria, 8 and a half, 26. Johannesburg, 7, 24. Mai King, 11, 26. Uh, Klaxdorp, 9, 20. Kimberley, 5 minimum with a maximum 16. Bloemfontein, 2. 15 Richards Bay 11 19 Peter Maritzburg 4 and a high of 16 degrees Durban 12 18 Mtata 4 15 East London starting off on 7 reaching high of 16 degrees Craddock minus 1 reaching high of 13 Port Elizabeth 7 15 George 5 and a high of 14 degrees Sutherland very cold minus 4 and a maximum of only 7 Cape Town is 7 14 Worcester 1 13 Springbok around 0 reaching high of 14 degrees and Uppington starting off on 2 degrees minimum reaching a high of 8 18 degrees Celsius later. And that's a wrap of your weather and your temperatures for the 6 o'clock bulletin. We'll keep you updated throughout the course of your morning. As always, I'm back just after 6.30 with another update. Oh, and what an exciting morning it's going to be. I'm very, very happy that Taryn Lamb is here, guys. She's yeah, one of my I'm favorite excited. performers yeah. ever. Uh, but of course, it's that time of the morning where we pump the brakes as we welcome a brand new day because we do live in a world that's constantly changing. So as we welcome today, the 8th of August, we take a look at what happened on this day in history. Yes, on this day in 1974, U.S. President Richard Nixon announced his resignation as the first of the Watergate scandal and remains the only U.S. president to have resigned from office. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And then also on this day, on the 8th of <laughs> August in 1988, it was the debut album, or the release of the debut album, of NWA's Straight Outta Compton and was released marking a high point in hip-hop and it also brought gangster rap to mainstream music and it really pretty much launched the careers of members such as Ice Cube and Dr. Dre. That's, that's from the movie, by the way. This is, this yeah. is not the... Original. Oh, wait, what's the original? No, that's the original. Okay, that's how well they cast it. Because wow. I thought that was from the movie. This is the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> and on the 8th of August 2000, American Civil War submarine Air, the HL Hunley, was raised to the surface after 136 years at the bottom of the ocean and is now on display in South Carolina, United States of America. Wow, talk about under the sea. Okay. Sure, for 136 sea. years, can that's you imagine? A, that's a very long, <laughs> that's time. A long time. <laughs> anyway, that's our bite-sized dose of history. You go out there and make this day one for the books. <laughs> Let's quickly take a very first break this morning. Yep, your Wednesday is now officially underway. When we come back, we get into all those top trending hits, your 5M top 40 local and international charts. Stick around for that. And then we're about to take your Wednesday to a whole nother level because the one, the only Taryn Lamb is in studio. Yes. How beautiful. You're welcome. You're welcome, South Africa. And she is going to perform for us, but we get to know her a little bit better after the break.
Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso right here on SABC3. Now, uh, it is the day before Women's Day and it is also a Woman Crush Wednesday. We want to know from you, um, from Rihanna to Beyonce to Whitney Houston, who is your all-time favorite music artist? Let's see what you had to say. Uh, the first person says, mine is Nicki Minaj. All righty. Peter Johnson says, good morning, fam. It's got to be Celine Dion. Jasmine saying, morning to all my sisters. Wish you a gorgeous Women's month. I love Whitney Houston. Bokhari says Celine Dion. Muko says Whitney Houston. Another one for Whitney. Majange says Beyonce. Donna saying Whitney. And then Tuli saying morning team. Beyonce, Nicki Minaj and some of my locals. Leanne May, Juanita Duplessis and many more. I love that. I really, really love that. But keep us good. Keep us informed. We want to know who is your favorite all-time favorite female musical artist as we celebrate Woman Crush Wednesday. Uh, so listen, it is officially hashtag WCW, hashtag Woman Crush Wednesday. And yes, the face you see next to me is a very familiar one. The uber-talented, phenomenally amazing, oh, beautiful okay. Karen Lamb is in the studio, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness, it's, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. D did you know that you are one of my favorite performers? No like, way. ever. If, if I had to have like a top 10 in the world, you'd be there. I'm going to phone you when and I listen... see the 11th performer. I'm going to be like, hey, Kat. So, <laughs> <laughs> listen, uh, we're going to get to know you a little bit because you're rocking new music right now. So yes. it almost feels like a brand new you. Yes. So we do this with a 60 second quick fire rapid question okay. series and afterwards we'll talk the serious stuff. Fair. Are you ready? I'm ready. Run the clock in five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Would you rather eat a jar of Nutella or peanut butter? Peanut butter. Summer or winter? Winter. Have you, would you rather no, have the, summer. Summer. <laughs> would you rather have the ability to go back two days or ahead 30 minutes? 30 minutes. Oh, spa day or skydiving? Spa day. Infused chocolate with orange or chili? Chili. Your toilet roll over or under? <laughs> I don't know. Huh? <laughs> you have to answer. Under. Under. <laughs> no. No, over. Nobody does Jokes. under. Anyway, uh, pineapple on your pizza or no? Yes. Movies with subtitles or audiobooks? Mo movies with subtitles. What's the last album you bought? Um, it's Sharon. Oh. Uh, favorite color? Red. Prince William or Harry? <laughs> Harry. Morning person or night owl? Mm, night owl. Your favorite word? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> your alarm goes off. Do you snooze or get up? <laughs> snooze five times. Dirty dancing or Saturday night fever? Dirty dancing. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Ryan Reynolds or Ryan Gosling? Oh, Ryan Gosling. Favorite sport team? Man United. Okay, this interview is done. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh wow. Uh, listen, this is so exciting. I, I've, I've seen you in a couple of stages uh, that we've performed on together yes. where I've emceed and you've performed. Hello. And uh, oh, hello, Sister Princess. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you very much. Um, but now you're doing something uh, different. Yes. Um, uh, tell me about what, what's been happening since. We, oh, thank you so much, Sister Princess. Thank Since you. I last saw you, what's been happening in your musical life? So I've been, I've, I'm exploring Afrikaans music at the moment. Mm -hmm. And that came while I was filming Set Oester. Yes. And music has always had such a cool, I've had a cool experience with music, just getting to go in and out of genres and work with different people. And I've made an album, I've worked with amazing songwriters. One is here today, he's uber amazing, Johan Oberose. Yeah. <laughs> he wrote so many amazing songs for my album. Yeah, yeah. I got to work with Arnold Kaleski and Paolo Azevedo. I'm doing shows all over. I'm shooting. I think people have been waiting in the wings, just waiting to, for, for your door to open so that they can say, I want to work with you. And now oh. it's finally happened. And may I just quickly take a pause moment to just myself. We are talking to a SAFTA award-winning actress, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> SAFTA award -winning. That was crazy. Right? That was crazy because I wasn't at the SAFTA. You weren't at the SAFTA. Were, were you anticipating to win? No, not yeah. at all. I was at a show and I walked off stage and I saw there was like 500 million Twitters and 700 <laughs> missed calls. And I was like, what's going on? And then I went online and I was like, what? Yeah, yeah. Oh my crazy, God. And then you have to crazy. continue a show after that as well. Crazy. But then back again to the music and the Afrikaans thing. And mm -hmm. how do you kind of find yourself making that transition? Isn't it an easy one for you to do? I mean, you act in Afrikaans. Uh, yes. Um, uh, soapies, if you will. Yes. Um, is, is it an easy one for you to make? Like holistically, it's, it 
feels like I'm coming back home. So I feel more rooted. Mm -hmm. The challenge comes where I'm Afrikaans second language and not first language. So it's, it's wait, a wait, challenge. Wait, no, 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 no. Please explain that because I, I feel I don't understand. What do you mean by no, that? There's like big words, like these really big words that I really want to speak because it's fun to, it's a beautiful language and I really want to embrace it. So sometimes when I'm on the spot, then I'm just like, oh. What, what are some words you wish you could use in songs, like big Afrikaans words? Oh my goodness, no. Um, <laughs> no. Um, Where's my um, tweet? I look a bit. <laughs> no! You still carry that there's, a, there's a lot. <laughs> but I learn as I go. That's beautiful. I learn as I go. Like, I learned a beautiful one called Geer Verlies. Geer Verlies. Yes. I was like, what is this beautiful word? And it's Memory so, loss. Yeah. What? You, yeah. you, what can't you do? I am, Can I just ask you I that? I for the men said pay the play. I do not do <laughs> Listen, I, I, like I said, I'm super excited to have you here and cannot wait to hear the new music and I'm sure that you'll be enjoying it at home, so make sure that you don't miss out on it. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, Taryn Lamb is in the studio! Thank you. I think it's safe to say yeah. everyone has a crush on yeah. Taryn in this entire Yeah, no, studio, I'm really right? excited to have her here. But awesome. it's time to look at the movers and shakers on the 5 Fam Top 40 local and international chat show. So this week, new music from mm -hmm. Shaw Majorzy, awesome, and finally, Maroon 5 have lost their hold on that number one position, but who will replace them? We better touch base with Mr. Nick Hammond. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Nick Hammond here, back to recap the 5FM Top 40, the biggest songs in music from the past weekend. And like we always do, we begin by jumping straight into it and looking at the brand new entries onto the charts. And speaking of which, this one coming in at number 40, taking the world by storm very soon, I'm sure. But for now, South Africa, it's Shoma Josie with Ooh. Then at number 39, it's a funk-inspired, laid-back, easy dance tune. Brand new music on 5FM this week. The second new entry that I wanted to highlight for you, it's Tom Budden and Copa with Things Change. Things change, things change. All right, guys, let's jump into my two mover and shaker picks for the week. The first one that I've gone with from the 5FM Top 40 this past weekend has gone from 31 to 29 after three weeks in the charts, but I definitely think this dude is the one to watch. He's a multi-award winning songwriter who's now decided to start writing songs for himself. His name is Benny Blanco. He's teamed up with Halsey. The track is called Isa. In love, we used to old hands, man, that was enough. Then we grew up, started to touch, used to kiss in the My second move and shaker pick jumps from 35 to 16 in just two weeks in the 5M Top 40. It's Nicki Minaj and the controversial Takashi 69. This track is called Fifi. I don't really want no friends. All right, finally we get into the big ones, the top 10s from the last weekend, the biggest songs on 5FM. Beginning at number 10, it's Jonas Blue with Jack and Jack. This track is called Rise. Then coming in at number nine, unfortunately we've recently heard terrible news about this artist and we wish her all the best with her recovery. It's Demi Lovato and Clean Bandit. The track is called Solo. Coming in at number eight, also happening to be the highest local entry this week on the 5FM Top 40, it's Shakana and Mari Shan. This one is truly great. It's called Different. Selena Gomez has climbed to your number seven spot this week in the 5FM Top 40. It's a single from the second season of 13 Reasons Why off the soundtrack, a series that she produced. It's called Back to You. I know I'd go back to you. After five weeks on the charts, this breakout star from the UK now being the one to watch, teaming up with Nicki Minaj on the remix of her track, Boot Up, it's LMA. It's been a while since we've heard anything from this guy on the 5FM Top 40, but finally he's back and he's back with a bang, now sitting at number five. It's George Ezra with the first of now two singles of his latest album called Shotgun. At number four is the chart really and truly started to count down and heat up this past weekend. It's sampling a classic, Bad Balvin, J Bunny and Cardi B with I Like It. If you're a fan of this band who came in at number three this week, you've got to go and check the acoustic version of this single that's just been released. It's Five Seconds of Summer with Young Blood. Young Blood. See you want me. See you want me. 
This week we had a new number one, which you'll find out after the track, which had three weeks at the number one spot, dropped down to number two. I'm talking about Maroon 5 and Cardi B with Girls Like You. With guys like me to sundown when I come through, I need a girl like you, yeah. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching me. Make sure you keep listening to 5FM's Hammond Time with me, Nick Hammond, Monday to Friday, 9 to 12. And of course, every Saturday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. as together we find out which track will get to number one on the 5FM Top 40. And speaking of which, this past weekend, it's a challenge that's taken the world by storm. It's off one of the hottest albums out right now from one of the century's most successful recording artists. I'm talking about Drake with In My Feelings. Are you riding? Say you never ever leave from beside me. Ah, yes, thank you, Mr. Nick Hammond. Hey, like a tunes to start off your Wednesday morning. Right now, though, if your entertainment knowledge is on point, then this game is for you. Our emoji charades game will really test your skills this morning because is it a movie? Is it a TV show? Maybe a song? How many words on the title? So many questions. But uh, don't worry, we'll give you a couple of clues along the way as well. Here's our emojis, all right? So obviously uh, we're looking at a song, two words, there's a heart, and what is that? It's a Pinocchio. It's a Pinocchio? Yes. Lying yes. one? Pinocchio, definitely. Pinocchio. A Pinocchio one. Right, so you guys got the clues? Let's see. I love see. that emoji. Okay, well, the first clue is it's an R&B and hip-hop song written by two or recorded by two American artists. And it's also the female vocalist was a member of the group Fifth. Harmony. Mm. The third clue, it was released as a single from the movie soundtrack for Love, Simon. Ooh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a really good clue. That's a good clue, man. I haven't seen the movie, though. That's I right. Don't know. Yeah. And then we've got a final clue for you as well. It was nominated for a Teen Choice Award for the Choice R&B Hip Hop Song. So, hmm. All right. I think, Any I clues, think guys? Do you know? Do you know? Yeah? I think I know. You think you know? I really think I know. Really? Because I... Definitely don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. But if you think you know what this song is, clearly it's a song. You can let us know on uh, Facebook or even on Twitter. Just remember to use that hashtag Expresso Show so we can follow the conversation. And try out iMoji Charades Games if you are switched on on your Wednesday morning. <laughs> Stay tuned to your feel-good breakfast show now uh, with the rugby tag or tag rugby World Cup <laughs> coming one. around uh, pretty soon around the year. We'll be st uh, speaking to Ruth Vessels and to, uh, is it Stuart McConnell? Yes, about all the details regarding that event. Exactly, and then we take a sneak peek as to how Expresso's wardrobe is set up. All that more happening on your feel-good breakfast Just show. Just like that. Oh, We're going to do the second song, only guitar and vocal as well, so no more pianos. Don't worry, How long before the first song? The first one will be... 856. 856. Sorry, 656. Oh, no,
Welcome back. You're live with Expresso. Thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, lots of excitement as the Springboks will soon be kicking off their rugby championship campaign. It's going to be a big one, but they won't be the only local rugby team in international action. Our South African tag rugby team will be jetting off to Australia later this year to fight for the coveted trophy at the Tag Rugby World Cup. Ruth Vessels from the South African Tag Team joins us this morning. Such a pleasure having her here, along with an old friend, the director of the South African Tag Rugby Association, Stuart McConnell. Guys, welcome back. Thank you so um, much. Always great to see you, Stuart. I think you're one of the coolest advocates for rugby <laughs> in general. So thank you so much for all of your efforts. Um, but enough about you. Let's talk to Ruth. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think Stuart often laughs at me because I'm, I'm like a child. Whenever anything rugby comes into my sphere, I get so excited, and and tag is just something so inclusive, something yeah. so proud, um, the, and South Africa has a very proud uh, heritage in this this new sport already. Yeah. But for the uninitiated, what is tag exactly? Can you explain the format for us? Okay, so tag that I play um, on for the World Cup, you have eight players on the field because I play in the mixed team. It's four females and four men, and. We play together, we have Valkyrie patches on our side, where you have the attached a tag it's on the patch, and when you pull it off, it counts as a tackle, basically, because there's no contact. Because then you know. So there's no, like, I touch it, I don't touch it. <laughs> if you've got the tag in yeah. your hand or it's on the ground, it was, it was a touch. Um, Stuart, it's amazing to me how much we've grown. I've probably connected with you around tag, with the, the Springboks endorsing it as well, maybe about four years ago, yeah. and it was still in its kind of development stages. Now we've got a World Cup. How big has it gone? Talk me through the growth. Graham, it's, ph it's phenomenal. The get when we last chatted, we were talking about development programs for youth. Now yeah. we've got an opportunity where young women like Ruth in Women's Month, <laughs> uh, her and, and her teammates are going to the World Cup in Coffs Harbour, Australia, from the 1st to the, the 4th of November. So our adult leagues is something when you retire from your little ex escapades in rugby, <laughs> you can even take it up. And I, I've challenged you before. We'll yeah, get you I, out I, there. I don't know if the game is ready for, <laughs> for someone with my, my breakneck speed. Yeah. Um, it, it really is. I, I keep using the word inclusive because it is a great developmental yeah. tool. Yeah. It's a great way to integrate women into the game of rugby, which has taken a massive step up. The women's game is fierce at the moment. How good are you, Ruth? How good do you have to be to play on a mixed national team? Honestly, I, I, I don't even know how I made the team myself. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> She's very good. I'm about to. Let's smack talk right no. there. Come on, man. <laughs> because I, I joined the Ike's Vibe at UCT when I started this year. And it was the first time I played tag ever. And then we won the league. We came second, actually. And then after the game, Stewart came to and is like, You've been selected for the team. And I was like, what? Me? Essay? This has never happened before. So I was like shocked by my own ability, basically. So. How's, how's the team feeling? Because now it's real. Now it's not just a varsity league. Now you are going to compete against the best on an international stage. How's the team feeling? We're very excited. Definitely competitive because we play our men's open when we train. So... We have a training session tomorrow where we'll burst them, hopefully win once again. You never know. Yeah. Anything is possible. I, I love it, man. You're like the, the least competitive person I've ever interviewed <laughs> on this couch. Come on, man. Um, no, but it's good that you, you're humble and stay humble in that space because you, this all it really is about selling the game of rugby. And this is a great way to introduce the 15-man okay. format in a safe way, in an mm. inclusive way again. Um, why is this so important? Why have you got Saru behind you? Why have you got so many professional rugby players backing tag, do you think? Um, Graham, I think it's twofold. Number one, rugby's numbers are, are slowly dwindling. We need, to get, we need to fill stadiums. We need to get people involved. We need to get the game in the communities. Yeah. Uh, tag rugby with the youth gets the community together with young kids getting off the streets and away from drugs and crime. We've spoken about that Massive a lot. Thing, yeah. But adults need to support. And when the adults see their kids playing tag, they want to play. So uh, Ruth and, and six of her girlfriends that are in the <laughs> tag box team, we call them friends, but they're trailblazers. They're six ladies that have been selected. Nokwando Shezi, she's from KZN Stanger. Now, if you went to Stanga and said Nokwando would be playing in the, in the tag box team yeah. five months ago, they would have laughed at you. So the game is spreading. It's growing. Yeah. These ladies are trailblazers. They're, they're going to the World Cup. There are 4,000 athletes going to the tag World Cup. 200 teams, 36 nations. It's not a Mickey Mouse event. So it's on the international stage. They'll be representing South Africa, which is 
absolutely brilliant. Um, the opening ceremony is going to be like the Olympics with 4,000 people walking onto that yeah. field. It's amazing. If you weren't nervous before we started this, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're feeling it now. Ruth, all the best of luck. Please Thank send our best. So what, what a message to send on Women's Month, ahead of Women's Day tomorrow. So enjoy Women's Day Thank um, you. tomorrow. Thank you. But um, all the best of luck. Go and do us proud. Thank you so much for all of your Thanks efforts. To you and your team. Um, and go and track them on our social media platforms as well. We'll keep you up to date with their progress. In the national news, land expropriation, South Africa's ailing economy and gender-based violence are some of the issues which are expected to be discussed during the Cabinet Lahotla in Pretoria this week. A stimulus package for the economy will primarily focus on the inclusion of women and young people. The Deputy Minister in the Department of Cooperative Government and Traditional Affairs, Andre Snell, says through the Municipal Infrastructure Support Agent, they've been working intensely with the bottom third municipalities that lack the capacity to render basic services to help them out of the distressed state where they can get the basics right. On the international front, at least 34 people are reported to have died in a fresh outbreak of Ebola in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Officials are scrambling to contain the deadly virus in the rest of eastern part of the country. And then finally, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has told Zimbabwe's President Emerson Mnangagwa in a telephone conversation to rein in his security forces after six people were killed in election violence. Guterres also spoke by phone with opposition leader Nelson Chamisa to urge him to turn to the courts if he plans to challenge Mnangagwa's election victory. Well, that was your 6.30 News update. I'll have another full bulletin for you at the top of the hour. In cricket this morning, form of being rewarded and an opportunity to build a senior leadership team in the absence of Fafdub sleeve for the rest of the protest tour of Sri Lanka. Given his first leadership role in the senior setup, Quinton de Kock will captain the side for the remainder of the ODIs as the team push for a whitewash, starting with a win today in Candy. That match kicking off at 11 before closing it out on Sunday in Colombo. On to the PSL, our reigning champions, Sundowns have their first win under the belt, beating Polokwana City 2-0. Nascimento netting his second in as many games and Lebohang Mapue getting his first for the Brazilians. That will bid best Vitz cruise to a 3-1 dominance of Kaiser Chiefs at F&B last night. Then tonight, Free State Stars take on Maritzburg, Baraka entertain Cape Town City Pirates, or in Nelson Mandela Bay to face Chipper, and Supersport take on Amazulu at the Lucas Maripe Stadium. And then, of course, big transfers, no time at all available to the English Premier League teams, most notably Chelsea's new manager, Maurizio Sarri, who now has less than two days to find a replacement for Thibaut Courtois. The Belgian international failed to report to training and is widely expected to move to Real Madrid. Of course, while Leicester and Man United get the league underway at Old Trafford on Friday, Chelsea open their accounts on a bumper roster on Saturday against Huddersfield at the John Smith Stadium. More on all of those stories on the top of the hour. Well, let's take another look at the roads. In fact, a first look at it in Gauteng and Highfelt. On the N1 southbound, there's slow moving traffic. That's between the Brackfontein Interchange and New Road. I'll have another update for you in half an hour. More than a club, more than an appliance brand, Defy. Right, it's just after 6.30. Let's quickly take another look at your weather and your temperatures. And it looks like yet again another chilly morning for most parts of South Africa, especially down in the western parts after we saw some snowfall on the mountainous region. Sutherland, minus four this morning. Very, very cold. I'll run you through quickly. Polokwane, nine a minimum with a maximum 23. Mombela, 11, 18. Pretoria, eight and a high of 26. Johannesburg, 7, 24. My King, 11, 26. Klagsdorp 920, Kimberley 5 and a high of 16, Bloemfontein 215, Richards Bay 11 minimum with a maximum 19 degrees, Peter Marysburg 416, Durban 12 and a high of 18, Ntata 415, East London 716, Craddock minus 1 and a high of 13, Port Elizabeth 715, George on 5 minimum this morning reaching a high of 14 degrees, Sutherland that cold minus 4 this morning staying cold with a maximum of only 7 degrees, Cape Town 714, Worcester 113, Springbok 0 this morning with a maximum 14 degrees and Uppington on 2 minimum reaching a high of 18 degrees. That's a wrap of your weather and your temperatures for the 630 Bulletin. Another update heading your way just after 7.
Well, if you've watched the Espresso show, you know that the presenters here are always styled for the gods. If you've wondered where they get all the style from... For the gods! For the gods! <laughs> then we go behind the scenes and tell you exactly how they get these looks together. Nick will be joining us this morning. Well, we've got musically that's e or music that's equally befitting for the gods. The countdown to Taryn Lamb's live performance. She's got brand new music. Mm. Really excited to see her do her thing. Stay tuned for that and more. We'll see you after the break. It's my feel good breakfast show. Shake it out, shake it out. It's Wednesday for a lot of people. It's like a mini Friday if you're making it a long weekend. Welcome back and time for us to find out what's happening with our local stars in our local which, entertainment Which universe. kind of people do you know that start their Friday on a Tuesday? Well, tomorrow's a public holiday and if you were smart enough to take Friday off, it's a long weekend. Yeah. Listen to Miss Plan Your Diary there. <laughs> anyway, somebody who's always living it up from lavish parties, international trips to rubbing shoulders with the industry's heavyweights. Bonang Mateba must be one of SA's most well-known and successful presenters. Now, announcing on Instagram yesterday, the radio and TV personality said that she'll be the host of the International Women in Media Conference 2018, which is amazing. Um, American singer Ashanti will be performing at the gala dinner to open the conference, and then other local celebs will also be forming part of the event, include Mayor Connie Ferguson sure. and Amanda Dupont. Dupont, I, I still Dupont. 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 And she insists. Dupont. Dupont, yeah, we. Oui. Um, now, the popular presenter also shared the big news on her social media saying she's very excited and gushed over the all star celebrity lineup, of course. And it just seems Queen Bee keeps on winning. Yeah, no, it doesn't stop one thing after another. Look at the poster, it's so official. This is it is yeah. official. Well done, and Champagne it's perfect for Women's for Month as everyone, well. Darling. All right. Now, um, if you've been following our baby updates, uh, then you would have learned that one of uh, South Africa's viral characters, Suzelle DIY, welcomed oh, a little baby girl favorite. in July. Yeah. Yes, yes. And it has been an incredible journey for her, cherishing every moment that she has uh, with her bundle of joy. Oh. Uh, she celebrated her daughter turning one month old with uh, such pictures as these. And she said, where does the time go? Uh, she's getting so big and changing every day. And the new mom shared some of her newborn's favorite activities, saying that she likes being carried around, looking at her mobile, bath time, listening 
listening to made up songs that uh, the parents sing to her about going to sleep. And uh, Julia also bragged about her first successful solo mission, uh, saying it felt like the greatest achievement in the world. And we're getting better at parenthood. Hashtag Dandy. Baby Zoe. That's Baba's name. Oh, how's Baby that? Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. There are not many Zoes around. I get super excited when there's a Zoe. <laughs> do, 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 you think, do you think that she sometimes does the Suzelle DIY thing, just like switches into character and then like, just to give her, her child a bit of a taste of like what mommy's other what side could expect? be? I think she does. You know what? I think mm. any grown up when there's a little baby, the voice just goes naturally high. You naturally yeah. start talking differently. Nah, nah, nah. I I'm, just hope, I'm still keeping it no. real. Though. I hope she doesn't do a tally with the child because you know she's got the tally, yeah, tally character. Because that can be a bit much sometimes for, <laughs> for a little <laughs> one. <laughs> All right. So, well, that's the latest so. news from our local entertainment uh, scene that we've got. Let us know what you've been checking out. Hashtag Expresso Show. Well, from entertainment to fashion, if you are a die-hard Expresso fan, then you've probably at one time or another asked yourself, how do the feel-good breakfast crew wake up every morning and look absolutely fantastic? Well, uh, the answer is simple, Woolies. And through, uh, even though the answer is simple, the process is anything but simple. Now, our Expresso fashion editor, Nick Strellis, and I met up at Woolworths just the other day to sort through our own personal presenter-style wardrobes. And now it's time for you all to get an all-access pass. Behind the scenes at Expressa Wardrobe starts now. All right, guys, so here's the cinch. We're here at Woolies. It's behind the scenes of what it takes to dress our Expresso presenters. People are constantly coming up to me asking me, how do you do it? How do you dress them? What's the process like? Well, today is your all-access pass. So let's go, guys. Ready for this. Hey. What are you doing? Okay. This is for you. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, this is. I was just a filler, girl. Uh -huh. I was just a filler for you. Incredible. You on the show Monday like this? <laughs> no, wait, I, this is about you. Um, Leanne. You're silly. Yeah, I'm too much. <laughs> See, we're at Woolies because this is the one stop shop. Yeah. We're going to get everything here. And what I love, there's a little bit of everything for everyone. And when it comes to me, it's all about comfort. Comfort is king on our show. It's three hours long, so I want to be able to move in it. I want to be able to just feel really good and sexy as a woman at the same time. Functional fashion. Yes. That's the key word. Absolutely. Function, meeting fashion, yes. coming together, explosions, beautiful explosions. I just want to warn you that I'm a bit of a taskmaster. Are you prepared for this? I am ready. But you know what? As a taskmaster, don't you want to go and put this back where you found it? Thank you. You are too cruel. There's only one destination, and it has yeah. to be Studio W. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the sort of the destination for modern workwear. Yeah. And you know, we talk a lot about styling for the show and giving you guys pieces that are super versatile. Yeah. You know, that you can adapt for your life. And so we talked to dresses. Yes. What do you think about this? I love this because these are the colors that I love. I'm obsessed with berry tones. Yeah. I'm obsessed with these warm, wintry tones, yeah. and it's so hot right now. See, it's even matching my lips. Yeah. I came prepared. <laughs> oh no, but I wasn't talking about this for you. It, it's it's for me. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna work though. Okay, maybe for you? Yeah. Better. Much better. better option. Oh, wow. Yeah? This is so good. Yes. <gasps> okay, so this Ooh. could be an option, right? Yeah. So we're talking color for the season, these these purples. Mm. Really good for showing the coifs. Because if you got it, flaunt it. I, I think I still want to get something that you can wear more weekend, okay. day, two nights. Okay. This is quite glam, but I, yes. I want to get something somewhere in the middle. Ladies, it's just, it's so nice to have someone who just gets me. And Leanne just, uh, she's being difficult. And I don't know, there's always this back talk and this, this energy. And you guys are just, you're there for me and you're just unpretentious. And oh, you guys are the best friends Have a guy could ever have. Some friends, Nick. Okay, that's, see, that's exactly what I'm saying. Did you see, I'm, did you see that? Yes, yes, this yes, This is nice, yes. so okay. soft. This is nice. Definitely, this is it. This has got the comfort, it's got the versatility. You need something light, and you're constantly moving back and forth between sets and segments. You need something yeah. that breathes and cotton breathes. And once again, versatile. And I love the silver hardware. It's just yeah. a nice way to contrast against the mm. black. I think it's a beautiful length. I think we pick that up with a heel or an ankle boot. Yeah. Really glam it up for TV. Let's go try this. Okay, I think cool. this is it. All right. I think this is it. Yes, you're gonna be wearing us on the show next week, but I also want you to see how we can style this single piece to maximum effect. So we're gonna do three different occasions you could wear this. Nice. Right? And let's start with a glam, sort of glam Saturday night out look. Lo jojum. <gasps> these. Whoa! These, these right? are beautiful. He's giving you life. 
Okay. Make me proud. Yes, sir. Make me proud. This is it. I am loving it. Yes. Beautiful. And you're comfortable too. So comfortable. Right? It's so beautiful and soft and yes. just I'm ready to do the things. You could rock this on the show. 100%. Okay, fantastic. So this is the base. This dress now three ways. Okay. I think we're doing glam first. Okay. How beautiful is this poncho? Stop it. I'm going to lay it on your shoulders. Beautiful. And literally just a very quick button up. And look how this is transformed. Hello. This is elegance and sophistication, guys. Okay. Very nice. And this pop of color with a mustard, which is very in for fall and winter. Now I'm going to talk more streetwear. <gasps> denim. Nice. And I know you love denim. Yes, you absolutely I love, love denim. it. And for the pièce de résistance. Oh. And metallic is very in right now. Streetwear. Ta-da! Yes. Wow, yes. I like this. This is so me. And it's so comfortable. It's comfortable, and it's 100%. the same dress, yep. obviously, as we used for glam. I know. And we've literally just given you two extra pieces, and it's a whole other look. Guys, and this is it. This is the last look. It's the Expresso Live look. 6 a.m., here she comes. Leanne, get out your girl. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Yes. Hello. This is it. I love it. This is your live look. Right? It's so cool, yes. It's the same dress, and all we've done is add one or two extra pieces. We've got the metallic court shoe again, we've got this incredible bomber jacket, we cinch in the waist beautifully, and can I add this hat? I see you, so I let's see, see. It's, yeah, it's just about thinking about how to add a bit more personality and a bit more fun to, to, to any look. Is this cute? No, it's really cute. <laughs> no, you look adorable. Wow. Guys, it's espresso. I'm ready to go. You ready for live? Yes. Let's go for live. Welcome to Feel Good Breakfast Show, We're hitting it, we're hitting it. Let's go. Yes, how much fun! That was so much fun. I loved it. That we was were really, really sick of so each other fun. by the end of it, but we were what? Were we? No, sick I, of each other? I was sick of you. But right. anyways, uh, we have to give a big shout out to head of wardrobe Rivka Abrams because it takes a village to raise these kids, <laughs> and Rivka is at the head of that village. Of course, the two of you having a really amazing team mm -hmm. effort. You being the uh, fashions. Uh, our fashion editor. I was you like, being the fashions. You? You I'm the fashions. <laughs> the fashion That's editor. That's my title. Uh, but Rivka is amazing, of course, making sure that we look stylish every single morning. Absolutely. Doing the most. It's a tough job dressing six presenters. Oh my God, you tell me. She deserves really all is. the props in the world okay. because there's six of you. There's six individual personalities, yeah. personas, styles you have to consider. There's a fortune that goes into it. Now, since Rivka hates being on TV hates it. and you are representing the team, yeah. what do you think is the most important factors to distinguish when it comes to making sure that you, it, you kind of conceptualize everybody's right. individual style because we're not all the same person. No. We have different styles. Absolutely, 100%. I think what Rivka and the wardrobe team do so well is really take into consideration the person behind yes. the fashion because it's all about reflecting that personality exactly. and that individuality. There are six of you. How yeah. do you stand out? What makes you special? So yeah. for you, Miss Leanne, Miss Leanne, you Thank are you, femininity darling. to a T, oh. ultra femininity. So I think for you, it's all about those tones and those accents that really yeah. showcase that part of yourself. Yes. Obviously also about the coives. We talked about the coives. The coives. So we it's love about, the coives. It's about highlighting those pieces or those assets of yours that you're most proud of. And I think yeah. the way we do it here is, is perfect. 100%. Miss Zoe. Miss Zoe. Miss Zoe is our fun little girl next exactly. door. Exactly. I think with Zoe as well, it's, she's got a huge personality, but yeah. she also has a bit of an edge. So it's about incorporating pieces that also showcase that edge. Anytime we put, or Rivka puts Zoe in red, people yeah. Explode. Red yeah. is her Definitely. absolute go-to color. color. Mr. Yes. Cadlejo, yes. he is the consummate gentleman. Yes. And he's so sophisticated and sleek and confident in his real life persona. I think the clothing absolutely reflects that. Yeah. He looks great in a suit. No one looks better in a suit than Mr. My boy. 100%. Mr. Ewan, can we talk about Ewan? Oh. oh. Oh, Ewan, he looks great Ewan with is, just nothing. He's easy to dress <laughs> because nine times out of ten he's not wearing anything. So, yes. But he's also a former model, a former supermodel. Can I say that? Yes. So I think for him it's really easy. He looks good in anything. Yeah. But um, also it's very minimalistic and we try and, and, and give him some stand-up pieces like yeah. a bomber or a leather jacket he can very pull nice. it off. Yeah. Mr. Graham Richards. Mr. Papa. Big Daddy. So big I like Brittany, the word you call me Big Pop. But he's, yes. I mean, we all know Graham, he's so down to earth, he he's is. so personable and lovely, and he's a classic guy, so we yeah. keep him in classic pieces, yeah. pieces that really stand the test of time. Mr. Tobiso, new kid on the block. New kid on the block. He is going to oh, be a wow. handful. Hello. Good luck Hello. to Rivka and our team for James trying to get Bond, this guy together. 007, look at this. Right? That is, yeah. Very looking nice. good, but yeah, so it, it, it really is about taking into consideration the person behind behind looks. Yeah, now when it comes to our looks, and of yeah. course, uh, we, ha we you, you also like to be kind of on the pulse of what's trending Absolutely. right now. What are the trends that we need to be aware well, of? We're throwing forward to spring, summer. Yes, we're firmly in winter, but spring, summer drop is already here, and yes. Woolies is precipitating some incredible international trends that are gonna make 
Um, spring, summer season, amazing. So florals. So we've already started to put Zoe and yes. you guys sort of Rivka's yes. in in the florals. So these yeah. pants here. Things like natural tones. Yeah. So going back to natural hues and the reflected in, in what you guys wore um, yesterday, even yesterday, now. Yeah. And then things like stripes are really big right now. Will be for spring, summer. Really slimming and elongating. Look at you, girl. Hey. Look at you. Hey. Look at I've you. Got that Going, got that yeah. And the lilac as well. Lilac for the color for spring summer is going to be huge. Uh, it's it's set to drop in Woolies very very soon, so you guys will be in lilac very Wonderful. soon. Oh, I can't wait. Thank you, yes. Nick. Thank you, of course, to Rivka as well for making sure that we look absolutely stylish every single day. Um, of course, we have one more question for you. Yeah. Uh, there is something particularly interesting that's happening there at is, Woolies Leanne. at this very very moment. Thank you for Do asking. Do you have something? Thank you for asking. Share? You're lovely. I love You're that absolutely lovely. Please. For right now, it's a 65 percent up up to 60. 65% off selected fashion, beauty, and homeware. Wow. This is available online on the Woolworths app and in store. 65%, that's nothing. And there's also a 20% off non-sale selected spring items. Wow. So all the items you guys are wearing today, guys, yes. you can get this now. 20% off, that's only available online. Nick, you are doing the most. I'm trying. You're doing the most. We are here for it. Woolies coming through in a big way. And if you want to be in some standout presenter fashion, then make sure you head in store to shop this incredible promotion. You can also head online to www.woolworths.co.za or download the Woolies app. It makes it so easy and you can shop right now. And of course, it's very fashionable offer is only available while stocks last. T's and C's do apply. Did you see a photo of you with clothes on there, dude? Now and then. <laughs> now <laughs> and then. I promise I'll, I'll, I'll put some clothing on sometimes. <laughs> That's a, um, it's a few good breakfast show. It's the middle of the week. It's a Wednesday. Oh. We keep it inspirational. We keep living in the spirit of Tatama Diba as well, following on from last month. But we're making every day a Mandela Day. And we're taking a look at a brand new book called The 100 Mandela Moments. And we have the author joining us, Kate Sidley, with us a little bit later on. <sighs> then the incomparable SEFTA winning Karen Lamb is here. Yeah, we love her. <laughs> She's just so ridiculously talented and so down to earth. And she's here just for you. She'll be performing after the break. Ooh, it's tough getting up in the morning. That's why for breakfast, I'm making eggs. Benedict, get it? I just love a good food pun. Share your photo and recipe of your favorite winter dish with the hashtag for the love of winter and you could win 5,000 Rand in weekly prizes and stand a chance to win a grand prize of 100,000 Rand. Roads quality for the love of winter. Rise and shine with your feel good breakfast show, Espresso.
Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express on SABC3. As we continue in celebrating Women's Month, we are joined by an extraordinary lady, the tremendous, tremendously multi-talented Taryn Lamb, who's just dropped a, a brand new Afrikaans offering called Mo Uriya, and we're about to hear some of the music uh, that emanates from that album. Here she is now with the title track. Take it away. Thank you. Brand new offering. Listen, once is small with you. In fact, in fact, get the music now. Uh, it is available. And let us know also what you thought about that performance on our Feel Good Breakfast Show's Facebook page. We'll have more from Taryn Lamb later. Right now, top of the hour. You know what it means. 
Time for the news. In the national news this morning, land expropriation, South Africa's ailing economy and gender-based violence are some of the issues that are expected to be discussed during the Cabinet Lahotla in Pretoria this week. Communications Minister Nomvula Makonyane said the plans on how to implement land expropriation without compensation will be discussed. Last week, the ANC's national executive resolved to amend the constitution to allow for expropriation without compensation. Mokonyane said Cabinet will also develop a stimulus package for the economy, which will primarily focus on the inclusion of women and young people. The Deputy Minister in the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Andre Snell, says through the Municipal Infrastructure Support Agent, they've been working intensely with the bottom third municipalities that lack the capacity to render basic services to help them out of distress uh, that they can, of course, get the basics right. They are working together with other national departments and provincial treasuries to further diagnose the problems in those municipalities and to develop recovery plans. Now moving further abroad, at least 34 people are reported to have died in a fresh outbreak of Ebola in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The dead include a health care worker, the World Health Organization has said. Officials are scrambling to contain the deadly virus in the rest of eastern part of the country. It's been confirmed to be the Zaire strain of the virus and vaccinations of health workers may start as early as today. It is the 10th Ebola outbreak in the country. And then finally, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has told Zimbabwe's President Emerson Mnangagwa in a telephone conversation that he must rein in his security forces after six people were killed in election violence, US spokesperson Farhan Haq said yesterday. Guterres also spoke uh, for, or rather by phone with opposition leader Nelson Chamisa to urge him to turn to the courts and not the streets if he plans to challenge Mnangagwa's election victory. The Secretary General made it clear that he was counting on Mnangagwa to ensure that the security forces show maximum restraint. Well, that was your 7 o'clock news update. Time for another look at what's happening in the exciting world of sport. Here is Graham Richards. We kick it off with the protest tour of Sri Lanka. Form being rewarded and an opportunity to build a senior leadership team in the absence of Thaf Duplessis for the rest of the protest tour of Sri Lanka. Given his first leadership role in the senior setup, Quinton de Kock will captain the side for the remainder of the ODIs as the team push for that whitewash win, starting with a win today in Candy. The match kicking off at 11 o'clock before closing it out on Sunday in Colombo. That's where they'll stay for the T20s with JP Dermini leading uh, the tour's batting charts already with 170 runs, taking over the captain's reins. Then on to the PSL, our reigning champions, Mamelodi Sundowns, have their first win under the belt, beating Polokwane City 2-0. Nascimento netting his second in as many games, and Lebohang Mabue getting his first for the Brazilians. That while well, Bidvest Vitz cruised to a 3-1 dominance of Kaiser Chiefs at FMV last night. And knowing the value of early points when mounting a title campaign, convincing strikes from Hoto, Zivoka Manja and Matupa, opening some space for the clever boys at the top of the early table. On the other end of a very unforgiving spectrum, pressure already mounting on Chiefs new coach Giovanni Salinas. And of course tonight, Free State Stars take on Maritzburg. Morocco entertain Cape Town City. Pirates are in Nelson Mandela Bay to face Chipper. And Supersport take on Amazulu at the Lucas Maripe Stadium. After Masat Sansa's season opening loss to Cape Town City, their new commander-in-chief, Caetano Tembo, still adamant they've got some shopping to do before the transfer window closes at the end of this month. And speaking of transfers, even less time available to the English Premier League teams, most notably Chelsea's new manager Maurizio Sarri, who now has under two days to find a replacement for Thibaut Courtois, as the Belgian international failed to report to training and is now widely expected to move to Real Madrid. Also linked to the Spanish giants, at least fellow countryman Eden Hazard has been spotted at training. And while Leicester and Man United get the league underway at Old Trafford on Friday, Chelsea open their accounts on a bumper roster on Saturday this weekend against Giants slaying Huddersfield at the John Smith Stadium. That's where we leave our sport now. Well, let's take another look at the roads in the Western Cape in Athlone. There's a stationary vehicle. It's on the N2 inbound. It's after Seoul Street. That right lane's been blocked. And moving to Gauteng and Boysen's traffic is slow moving. That's on the M1 northbound between Xavier and the Crown Interchange. I'll have another update for you at half past seven. More than a club, more than an appliance brand, Defy. 
Just after 7 o'clock, let's quickly take another look at your weather and your temperatures going into your Wednesday. And yet again, another chilly start for most parts of the country, especially down in the western parts with uh, some snowfall that we saw over the mountainous regions. Sutherland, minus 4 this morning. Very cold, so stay warm. Your temperatures this morning, Polokwane starting off on 9 minimum, reaching a high of 23 degrees. Mombela, 11, 18. Pretoria, 8, 26. Johannesburg, 7, 24. Maiking, 11, with a high of 26 degrees. Klagsdorp, 9, 20. Kimberley, 5, and a high of 16. Blum 215, Richards Bay 1119, Peter Marisburg 4 and a high of 16, Durban 12 and a high of 18, Mtata 415, East London 7 and a high of 16, Craddock minus 1 with a high of 13 degrees, Port Elizabeth 715, George 514, Sutherland minus 4 and a high of 7 degrees, very cold today. Cape Town 714, Worcester 113, Springbok around zero this morning, reaching a high of 14 degrees, and Uppington two minimum in your maximum 18 degrees. It's a wrap of your weather and your temperatures for the 7 o'clock bullets, and I'll be back in half an hour's time just after 7.30. Well, we are taking a quick break on your Feel Good Breakfast show. When we get back, we're going to introduce you to author Kate Sidley with the book 100 Mandela Moments. You do not want to miss out on that inspirational story. And we'll also be making some delicious goodies in the kitchen. Mustard crusted mac and cheese. Ooh, How's that? That sounds delicious. <laughs> I can't wait all to try that. <laughs> yep, all of this after the break. Espresso presenters and guests fly domestically with Mango. Enjoy outstanding service, online check-in and seat selection. With the widest booking and payment options, Mango is the only airline globally to accept store charge cards as a means of payment. Fly in comfort with ergonomically efficient seats. For more legroom, aboard a fleet of new generation Boeing 737-800 aircraft. Join the presenters of Espresso and fly Mango.
back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso right here on SAVC3. Well, 100 years of Madiba's life has inspired many iconic and unforgettable moments. So it was a mammoth task for writer Kate Sidley to choose just 100 to share in her new book, 100 Mandela Moments. The author, editor and reviewer joins Expresso to share more about how it all came together. Kate, so good to have you on the show this Hi. morning. Thanks for having me. I, I'm loving that we are in Tata Madiba centenary year. The spirit of Madiba is definitely alive. We've just come out of Mandela month. But there's already been so much literature available about Tata Madiba and his life. What inspired you to put together this piece of work? You are so right. I mean, there's so many amazing books, starting with his own work yeah. and obviously with his comrades and other writers and so on. But what's different about this book is, as the title suggests, it's a hundred short stories. Oh, wow. So each one stands on its own. So you can dip into the book and you can read one little story. It's Stunning. a couple of pages long. Um, and it, it's an accessible book. So yeah. that was the main thing that we yeah. wanted to achieve with this book, was something that anyone could read. Any South African, you don't have to be a historian, you don't that. have to be a Mandela scholar, mm. uh, you don't have to be interested in politics. They're human stories, beautiful stories, and quite a nice range of stories. So that's really what made this, um, what, really, what, what sort of really made this different from other books, I think. Mm. Yeah. Well, you speak about a range of stories. I mean, Tata Madiba's had many moments. You've yeah. captured a hundred of them and packaged them here. How did you specifically choose which 100 stories to put in the book? It was so difficult. Imagine. You know, obviously, I read a lot of his work and other yeah. people's works and so on. There's certain things that had to be in the book. So, of course, you had to have, say, um, the, the capture story of when he was captured, mm -hmm. the, the speech from the dock, uh, the Rugby World Cup with Francois Pinot, the, you know, obviously the inauguration and so on. So there were those kinds of stories. But then what I looked for were stories that had their own impact. So yeah. they could stand on their own and be beautiful or amusing or um, poignant or sad, whatever the case may be, that yeah. had their own kind of texture to them. And often I was looking for things that people hadn't necessarily seen. So mm. even though you had to have the kind of bones of his story, um, I was looking for things that, had, that, that told you something different about him yeah. or that people hadn't read before. I love that. And so it was really, it was lovely. It was lovely trying to find those stories. And people have told me that they've, they've learned from, from, wow. you know, from the book and they've seen interesting aspects of him maybe they hadn't seen before. So because that was, was going to be my next question to you. How does retelling these stories in your own words give the reader kind of deeper understanding of who Tata Madiba was? Mm. Um, I think that we looked at, I tried to look at different aspects, not only of his history, but also yeah. of his personality. Yeah. So there's Madiba the revolutionary, for example. Mm. And I think that when we look at Mandela, particularly the people who are younger, yeah. we are more familiar with his latter years. So we, we remember him as uh, the president and then as the sort of elder. But for example, I found so many interesting stories about him as a younger man, when he was um, the commander in chief of MK, when he was the volunteer in chief of the defiance campaign, and I think that a lot of readers, um, a lot of South Africans maybe aren't so familiar with those aspects of his history yeah. and it's important to try and get that kind of context mm -hmm. and, and, and to see him in all those different lights which I think makes, uh, makes a fuller picture. Yeah. Wow. Now this book is in chronological order, yes. uh, you know, telling eight uh, sort of pieces of the story. Why have you chosen to tell it in that way? So if you read the book from beginning to end, you'll get a basic biography of Nelson Mandela. Mm. Not every single thing that ever happened to him, yeah. obviously, but um, you can actually read it that way. Or you can dip in and read the little two-page stories one by one. And altogether, it gives you a really nice um, a sort of history of South Africa at the same time. So, so yeah, we talk about him as a, a write about him as a child and as a young man and as a student, and then obviously his his um, activist years and so on and as a prisoner, as a president. So it, it really works. It functions on two levels, mm. and the book isn't very long. That's the other thing that's quite important to know about it. It's under, it comes in at around two hundred pages, so you that's can easy. read. Yeah, not everyone's yeah. up for yeah. five hundred pages, yeah. Or, yeah. you know, and, <laughs> and and all of it is is stuff that you'll relate to on a kind of a human level. So it's not like you know the Codessa 2 exactly. negotiations yeah, in yeah, detail yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever. So, so it's, it's basically something for everyone. Yeah, it yeah. is, yeah. And oh. I think it would be nice for 
um, a lot of people have told me that they'd, they'd buy it for overseas visitors if someone's coming out or whatever, because it does give us South African history. Um, I think young people, I mean, I've got teenage kids, they've read it, they've enjoyed it. But I think anyone, any South African would find something yeah. enjoyable and fun. Mm. And, and interesting. Well, Ooh, Kate, okay. thank you so much for being here and, of course, bringing this beautiful piece of literature and artwork into our lives. We're here for it. I can't wait to start reading it as well. And, uh, of course, that's just another piece of Tatamadiba Tata that I think we're all going to hold dear to our hearts. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. Yay, definitely. Well, 100 Mandela Moments is a new book by author Kate Sidley, and it's available now from all major bookstores. Introducing Clover Care, the first enriched milk packed with nutrients to help you take extra care of your whole family. Made with love by Clover. Oh man, what an inspirational book indeed. Definitely going to get my hands on a copy, eh? It looks, oh, yeah. looks fantastic, really does. Inspirational, continuing that legacy of Tata Madiba. We should do uh, and strive for that every single day, not only on Mandela Day, but every Definitely. single day as well. Right now, though, taking you back, and I'm sure you'll be very familiar with this recipe we be, we're going to be making this morning. It is a good old mac and cheese, but we're adding a touch of health to it using Clover Care Milk. Chef Tash joining us in the kitchen. Chef Tash, thank you very much. Morning. Taking us back to our childhoods and even presents because mac and cheese is one of those kind of like timeless favorites. Definitely. Mac and cheese is very easy to make. It's one of those everyday, everyday things, except today we are going to upgrade things a little bit. And, I, and I'm glad you're here because I will say it, I have never made mac and cheese. You are not serious. I have eaten a lot of mac and cheese, <laughs> but I've never made it. So here we go. Okay. Um, first, we are going to melt our butter. And in here, we've got flour and nutmeg. Are we making so, a roux? Yeah, we're making a roux. a roux. And the whole purpose of starting with the flour is to brown it okay. so that our flour can toast. We are activating and um, making nice flavors. Right. It also helps to cook okay. the flour before anything. So there so we have it. Whisk, whisk, Just some whisk. butter. Please open flour. this for me. Got yes. it. So here's our clover care milk. And what's great about this is containing all the nutrients that's lacking in the South African diet. Definitely. Um, more than 10 vitamins in there. Also a great source of calcium and vitamin D. So yes. great for the bones. How much does that put? Sorry. Um, go ahead. More? I'll tell you. More, more, more. Remember, this is going to thicken because of the flour. The so flour, exactly. Yes. So you're going to smooth it out now. Yes, definitely. And we are going to be whisking away because we yeah. don't want any, lump, any lumps any to lumps. form. Yes, Look go at ahead. That steady go form. ahead. I'm just yes. saying, you know, <laughs> steady hands. Yes. Very steady indeed. Yeah, keep going. I think that should do it. Right. Got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. This is going to thicken in a minute. So whilst we do that, um, please mix in um, some stuff for me. Yes, what can I do? Um, these are bread crumbs. crumbs. Yes, um, red onion. We've got um, bacon, some parsley, a handful, okay. paprika, some nice um, chili flakes ah, there, there we go as, well. as well as ginger and garlic. So we are going to mix it is in it there. Is it all going in here? It's going okay, all so, in so there. So let's start with the cheese. Yes, um, not all not of it. Not all of us, just yes, because we just want some for the topping, half. obviously. Yes. Is that good, just like that? That is perfect. All right. And then everything, hoi in there. Don't be scared. So when Tash is here, we know. She says hoi, <laughs> just hoi. It's going to happen. You see, okay. it's thickening the over bacon. here. Oh, this looks delicious so far. Yes. Let's just give that a mix so long. Our parsley goes in there, some greenery. If you want to get oh. your hands on the recipe, very easy. SMS the keyword Clover to 33728. It will also be on our website, expressoshow.com, for your reading and cooking pleasure. <laughs> Those colors are beautiful. Um, remember, it. when you're salting your sauce, don't over salt it because bacon is already salty. That's it, and it there's, there's so many other flavor profiles in here with the bacon, like you mentioned, the cheese has also got a high salt content yes. as well. Then your spices, the chili, the paprika, it's all going to come together beautifully. Definitely. Okay, let's get this a Our good mix too. Our is thickening already. Is it getting there? It's getting Fantastic. there. Fantastic. We are going to put in a, um, a little cheese in here as well for that extra decadence. All right. Just okay. make it nice and stringy and ooey and gooey, just the way we nice like our mac and, and cheese. Nice and creamy. The keyword is clover. SMS that 23728. That's clover 23728. If you want to get your hands on the recipe, check out our website as well, expressoshow.com. We're going to continue finishing off our mac and cheese with a twist this morning. In the meantime, here's a look at those steps once again. Thanks. 
Every kid and adult we know loves mac and cheese, but finding a healthy version can be tough. We're giving this family favorite a healthy twist with the addition of Clover Care milk in this Clover Care mustard crusted mac and cheese recipe. For the white sauce, add clover butter and flour to a pot. Whisk to combine. Add your clover care milk and whisk to avoid any lumps. Add grated mozzarella, salt, pepper and grated nutmeg. Whisk until combined. Add macaroni and fold into the white sauce. Place into an oven dish. Next, for the crust, add fried bacon and a mix of cheeses to a mixing bowl. Add caramelized red onions, garlic and lemon zest. Then, add the breadcrumbs, paprika, cayenne pepper, chili flakes, mustard and chopped parsley. Stir to combine. Place over the macaroni and bake at 200 degrees Celsius for 20 to 30 minutes. Allow to cool for 5 minutes and serve. Creamy, cheesy and straightforward, this Clover Care recipe is sure to be a hit at the dinner table with your family and friends. Made with love by Clover. And boom, there you have it, a delicious mac and cheese. The keyword is Clover, SMS that to 3378, Chef Tash. Just to finish it off quickly, so we had our yes. cooked uh, macaroni in there, in the roux, in the sauce, that thick, that's uh, thickened up nicely, and yes. then we dish it out in an oven dish. It literally t took us a minute to do that, as yeah. you could see. This is beautiful. So this it's goes got over. those beautiful flavors. I'll just it kind of smells pour it. awesome even before you cook it, yes. That's it. And then like that. I'm gonna go everything. 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 And that goes into the oven. Bake it till it's nice and golden. Yes. And you're good to go, because essentially everything is cooked already. Everything is cooked. And some more cheese? Some more, a little bit. Just like that. Just for that beautiful Perfect. decadence. Chef Tash, now, thank you very much. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Lunch is served. Just like that, quick and easy. SMS the keyword Clover to 3378. Chef Tash, put it there. Come on. Bam. <laughs> That's how you do it. Yes. Introducing Clover Care, the first enriched milk packed with nutrients to help you take extra care of your whole family. Made with love by Clover. Oh, we're going to take the quickest of breaks. When we return, Zoe and I are going to sit down with a leader in elephant uh, conservation and conversation, um, Dr. Paula Kahumba. She is here to shed a little bit of light on, unfortunately, a very dire situation at the moment. Some scary statistics. And then tomorrow it is Women's Day. Naturally, we will also have a National Women's Day celebration. And we're joined by Minister of Arts and Culture, Natim Tetwa, for that conversation. So that's coming up after the break. Enjoy a moment in between with Mac Cafe. See you after the break. Welcome back, you're live with Expresso. Thank you so much for tuning in as we now get very serious. Of course, this Sunday, the 12th of August, is World Elephant Day. And at a rate of, and I'm struggling to actually get this out, 96 African elephants killed every day for the ivory trade. This might soon become a day of mourning. So we're very privileged this morning to have with us all the way from Kenya, one of the world's leaders in elephant conservation, Dr. Paula Kahumbu. She is also the CEO of Wildlife Direct, one of the continent's most prolific 
um, organizations that are hopefully going to turn this around. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. Dr. Paula, those are some scary statistics. And I mean, I have a fascination with elephants after reading a book about them, but where did it all start for you? Well, I think uh, just like you know, everybody here, we are so privileged in Africa to have these extraordinary animals, the world's largest uh, living mammals. The matriarch or, on of the, the wild. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and we take it for granted that they are, they, are, they are doing really well. I didn't meet elephants until I was already in my tw um, early 20s. And I was thinking about my master's degree research. I went into the field and I worked with two extraordinary Kenyan women who know every single elephant in the ecosystem of Amboseli, that's 1,500 elephants, they know them by name. And they can look at them on the horizon and they know exactly who's who. And just learning about those elephants, not as statistics, not as just giant gray blobs wandering about on the savannas, <laughs> these are animals with personalities, with intelligence, with compassion for each other, which have extraordinary knowledge and incredibly diverse uh, you know, relationships with each other, incredible intelligence. I mean, you can't help but fall in love with them and, and be changed forever. That, and that's really what happened to me. Um, I, I, it's heartbreaking to think that, and, and I don't know if this is exactly correct, but that we are seeing a, an elephant poached every 15 minutes for their ivory. There is so much talk in the current conservation, uh, conversation around conservation. Um, where do we even begin? How do we shift the culture um, to, to start addressing this? What, what is your focus on? I mean, look, we're facing a global challenge for all animals on this planet. Over 80% of our species are at risk or gone. Elephants are threatened because of the demand for ivory in markets around the world, primarily in China, but also in America, in Europe, Australia, and many other parts of the world. The challenge is something that we as Africans have to really take responsibility for. And I don't mean blame. I mean, we really need to take charge. And that's what my organization, yeah. Wildlife Direct, does. We launched a campaign in Kenya called Hands Off Our Elephants. We said they're our elephants. We're going to defend them. And anybody who threatens them uh, is, is a target for us. And we do this through our courts. So we took advantage of our legal system to track every single uh, trafficker of ivory and have them investigated, prosecuted, uh, put behind bars for, for a long period of time. So we really want to deter the criminals. But of course, the problem is not just in Kenya. We were able to reduce poaching by 90%. Sure. But that's wow. just one country, right? Poaching has you know, blown elephants away across other parts of Africa. Tanzania has lost over 70% of their elephants. Kruger is now losing yeah. elephants. Mozambique and even Botswana are now losing elephants. And it's all because people half a world away want to wear trinkets. They want to have uh, little bits of ivory because it's fashionable, because it's considered to be good luck. So we, we do have to work on all these angles. One is enforcement here in Africa. We have to do that as Africans. We've got to take responsibility. We've got to work across nations on that law enforcement. But we also have to go to the markets, to China, to Japan, to Indonesia, Malaysia, Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, all these countries where most of the ivory is going. Mm. And we've got to change people's attitudes. I think when you see an elephant, when you fall in love with elephants, there is no way. Yeah, when you, you would understand kill. the emotional intelligence. Well, yeah. how, how can you wear something that you know has come from the brutal slaughter of an animal that is just as intelligent as us, whose mysteries we haven't yet even uncovered? Sure. Well, Dr. Paula, you know, sitting here, hearing what you're saying, it makes me feel frustrated that we're not doing enough. But how can the average South African get involved and, you know, make an impact? So there's something that everybody everywhere in the world can do, but I think especially here in Africa, we have a huge opportunity. We, Wildlife Direct partners with Amarula uh, through the Amarula Trust, which is an organization that is helping us to take what we've achieved in Kenya and elevate it onto a global platform. So we're sending this message all over the world. And next weekend is World Elephant Day. It's a, it's an, it's a United Nations event. And we are going to celebrate it here in South Africa, as well as in Brazil and Canada and other parts of the world, by building a life-sized sculpture of an elephant out of ice. Are we going to let it melt in the sun and people can come and see this for themselves and really experience this, this idea that these animals are disappearing and our, our slogan is don't let them disappear. So we're inviting people to come for that. And of course, many people will not be able to go to Johannesburg or Sao Paulo or Toronto. Um, but anybody anywhere in the world can follow us on social media, the Amar Amarula or Wildlife Direct and share our messages, share our hashtags, don't let them disappear and World Elephant Day, and just to create that global awareness. 
because really when we reach all those people who are buying the ivory and we persuade them to stop buying ivory, there will be no market. There's no demand. There'll be no profit for these criminal cartels who are slaughtering these animals across the continent. And that's when we will have won. So we really have to amplify the message, um, win hearts and minds across the world. And as Africans, I think we are best placed to do that. I think you've got two advocates right here. Thank you so much for all of the efforts. Congratulations on all of the milestones that you have achieved on the positive, positive side of that. Um, but we are behind you 100%. And I think everybody in this country needs to do exactly what's happened in Kenya. Take responsibility. They are one of our most precious resources. In the national news, land expropriation, South Africa's ailing economy and gender-based violence are some of the issues which are expected to be discussed during the Cabinet Lahotla in Pretoria this week. A stimulus package for the economy will primarily focus on the inclusion of women and young children. The Deputy Minister in the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Andre Snell, says through the Municipal Infrastructure Support Agent, they've been working intensely with the bottom third municipalities that lack the capacity to render basic services to help them out of the distressed state that they can get the basics right. On the international front, at least 34 people are reported to have died in a fresh outbreak of Ebola in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Officials are scrambling to contain the deadly virus in the rest of eastern part of the country. And then finally, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has told Zimbabwe's President Emerson Mnangagwa in a telephone conversation to rein in his security forces after six people were killed in election violence. Guterres also spoke by phone with opposition leader Nelson Chamisa to urge him to turn to the courts if he plans to challenge Mnangagwa's election victory. Well, that was your 7.30 news update. I'll have a full bulletin for you at the top of the hour. In cricket form, being rewarded at an opportunity to build a leadership team in the absence of Faf Duplessis for the rest of the Proteus Tour of Sri Lanka. Given his first leadership role in the senior setup, Quinton de Kock will captain the side for the remainder of the ODIs as the team push for that whitewash series win, starting with a win today in Candy. Match kicking off at 11 o'clock before closing it out on Sunday in Colombo. In the PSL, our reigning champs, Sundowns, have their first win under the belt, beating Polo Grande City 2-0. Nascimento netting a second in as many games, and Lebohang Mabue getting his first for the Brazilians. That while Bidvest Vitz cruised to a 3-1 dominance of Kaiser Chiefs at FNB last night. Then tonight, Free State Stars take on Maritzburg. Barocca entertain Cape Town City. Pirates are in Nelson Mandela Bay to face Chipper and Supersport. Take on Amazulu at the Lucas Maripe Stadium. And in the English Premier League, so little time left for those English Premier League teams on the transfer window, most notably Chelsea's new manager Maurizio Sarri, now has just two days to find a replacement for Thibaut Courtois, as the Belgian international failed to report to training and is widely expected to move to Real Madrid. Well, Leicester and Man United get the league underway at Old Trafford on Friday. Chelsea open their account on a bumper roster on Saturday against Giants laying Huddersfield that at the John Smith Stadium. More on those on the top of the hour. Let's quickly look at the roads in Gauteng and Bedford View. There's been an accident and this is on the N12 after Barbara Road and it's causing heavy delays from Pretoria Road and in Kempton Park you can expect delays of up to 20 minutes on Modderfontein Road that's between Bontebok and Lowry Road. That's where I leave your traffic for now. I'll have a final update for you at 8 o'clock. Quality fuel, convenience and service with a smile. Whether it's to fuel up or stock up. Caltex, it's how you get there. It's just after 7.30, let's quickly take another look at your weather and your temperatures and chilly temperatures expected for most parts of the country as we start your Wednesday morning. Very cold though also in the western parts, especially with some snowfall that we saw over the mountainous regions. Sutherland, minus four this morning, so stay warm. Your temperatures, Paul Aquane this morning, starting off on nine minimum, reaching a high of 23. Mombela, 11.18. Pretoria, 8.26. Johannesburg, 7.24. My King, 11.26. Klaxdorp, 9.20. Kimberley, five minimum this morning. Your maximum 16 degrees, Bloemfontein 215, Richards Bay 1119, Peter Marisburg 4 and a high of 16 degrees, Durban 1218, Mtata 415, East London 7 and a high of 16 degrees, Craddock minus 1 with a high of 13, uh, Port Elizabeth 715, George 5 and a high of 14, Sutherland minus 4 reaching a high of 7 degrees, nice and cold. 
Cape Town 714, Worcester 113, Springbok good morning, a zero minimum for you with a maximum 14 and Uppington starting off on 2 reaching a high of 18 degrees. As a wrap of your weather and your temperatures for the 730 bulletin, I'll bring you a final update in just after 8. All right, well, let's talk about words that are still a buzz in many people's minds, though they may be still very mystical, if you will. Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, they still boggle the minds of many people. But one man who seems to firmly wrap his head around the subject is tech entrepreneur and speaker Simon Dingle. Now, his first book, In Math We Trust, uh, delves into the evolution of money and how we reached this point, and it looks uh, to the future of uh, how we can harness the power of cryptocurrency to enrich our own financial well-being going forward. Simon, great to have you here. You bring us great prospects, yeah, if I may. <laughs> First of all, congratulations on, on everything that you've been doing and congratulations on the on the book. Thank you. Um, I think all we really want to know is how, how much of an investment you've made in Bitcoin and, <laughs> and when did you get on board. But I think all of this cryptocurrency in general speaks to a, a massive paradigm shift. Mm. How much is the world changing? Well, have we not quite got there yet? Where, where do we stand in that life cycle? I mean, the world's always changing and we're always moving forward. Sometimes we have to take a few <laughs> steps back before we take one forward. <laughs> um, but I think uh, what I'm enjoying about uh, the world of cryptocurrency is that people are talking about money in a way that I haven't heard them talking about money before. People are starting to ask questions like, what is money and where does it come from? And why should only the government be allowed to make this <laughs> where stuff? Where is mine? <laughs> um, and starting to look at events in history why don't we have a gold standard anymore? What was the gold standard and what came before it? And I'm enjoying seeing people who weren't thinking about these things before having that conversation. And I think that's one of the gifts that Bitcoin has given us is this conversation and this new uh, idea about what money is and what it could be. Yeah. And of course, right now, many uh, forms of cryptocurrency exist all, all, all across the world. Yes. Bitcoin right now at some 83,000 Rand per Bitcoin. But what's the responsible way of approaching it? Because I am yeah. seriously considering just taking, you know, a little bit, a few cents and going, maybe let's see. <laughs> let's just dip into the Bitcoin yeah. pool. What, what's the responsible way of approaching this? So the responsible way of approaching it is the same way you should, res you know, respond to any of these things, which is don't spend money you can't afford to lose. Right. Uh -huh. Whether you're buying exactly. shares or whether you're buying Bitcoin or whether you're going to a casino, there's a level of risk you're exposing yourself it's to. It's an investment. And yeah. it's a, you shouldn't be spending money. So in the worst case scenario, we saw South Africans last year taking out loans to go and buy Bitcoin. Yeah. That's a very bad idea. But just to touch on something you said earlier, you know, when we talk about the world of cryptocurrency, as you, you mentioned, there are thousands of them out there. They're not all the same thing. You know, you can't talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum and Tezos and all of these cryptocurrencies as if they're the same thing. Okay. Bitcoin was designed to be money for the internet. Ethereum was designed to be, um, you know, a distributed world computer. They're very different projects. They use similar technologies like blockchain. Um, but I think part of the narrative that's been hijacked by technology companies at the moment is yeah. that they've convinced everybody, A, that cryptocurrencies are all the same. They aren't. Yeah. And B, <laughs> that blockchain is the important thing and not Bitcoin. And that's absolutely false. Blockchain is an interesting technology. It's a fascination to data scientists. It's a way for computers to prove that they did something. But Bitcoin <laughs> is the headline, not blockchain. When sure. you approach this, I mean, there's a lot of nodding heads going around. <laughs> yeah, is, we, we, we can all pull it together and buy one Bitcoin, guys. Um, <laughs> you don't have to buy one. And that's another, that's another misconception that's important to talk about. Yeah. You can buy a Rand's worth of Bitcoin if you want to. Every Bitcoin is divisible by 100 million base units that we call Satoshis. So like, you know, we have 100 cents in a Rand. You have 100 million Satoshis in a Bitcoin. And you can buy a few cents worth of them if you can find somebody to sell them to you for that. So, <laughs> Two Satoshis. So yeah. that. I think that's... You know, back to your point Senior about Satoshi, yeah. about gambling and not spending too much money. You can take ten rand and you can go and buy Bitcoin. Be careful who you're buying it from because there are a lot of scams out sure. there. Yes. Um, but you don't have to go and spend eighty three thousand rand and buy a whole Bitcoin. Was this was this book about answering a question? that you had when you set out, what was your motivation to put this all together? Or was it like a light bulb moment? You were like, okay, I need to tell this story. I actually wasn't thinking of writing a book at all when my publisher approached me and asked me um, to do it. Um, but it was an amazing opportunity to simplify something that's very complicated. And so I think part of, uh, it, it, was, it was also a way for me to work through a disillusionment I had last year. There was a lot of hype around Bitcoin, a lot of misunderstanding. And unfortunately, a lot of South Africans were getting scammed at the time. Mm. Um, so we've seen Ponzi schemes. We've seen um, you know, pyramid schemes. We've seen outright criminals in South Africa using the Bitcoin name because there's a lot of hype and yes. using the misunderstanding to scam people. 
Um, and so I wanted to tell a better story about this technology, about this gift to society, about what it could mean for us all, uh, and just help simplify it. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people are making money out of the fact that you think it's complicated and you don't understand it. Yeah. Screw that, right? Yeah. <laughs> let's make it simple. Money doesn't have to be complicated. And yeah. let's talk about what it really is and what it can really do for you. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, stop, I'm, stop. I'm, He's I'm, not going to answer that question. <laughs> thanks for joining us. Uh, really fascinating stuff. And we'll follow you at Simon Dingle on social media. Thanks, guys. The book is called In Math We Trust the Future of Money. I'm certainly getting myself a copy because I have yeah, been really phenomenal. thinking about diversifying the portfolio, if you will. So thank you very much. Man. Thanks, guys. So much on the go this morning on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Women's Month is being commemorated tomorrow. 62 years after really? the brave 62,000, sorry, yeah. rather 20,000 20, women marched to the union buildings. The Director General of the Department of Arts and Culture will be joining us talking about the national celebration that's happening tomorrow at Mbekweni Rugby Stadium. Such an historic day, exactly. We need to put the spotlight on that. And then also we are back with another epic performance by the yes. one and only Taryn Lamb. She's brilliant and Ooh. we're going to bring that performance for you after the break. Stick around. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> it is your feel good ah, breakfast show, man. You feel uh, it? Minds blown, inspired, awesome. inspired. Awesome. Uh, but right news. now, let's quickly tap into some international entertainment news. We have it's good news. Down. We have such good news. The biggest news has hit the Las Vegas Strip because Lady Gaga announced that she will be taking up residency at the Park Theatre in Las Vegas. Look wow. how, you would never recognise her if you had to walk down the street. She just looks so good. True. Uh, the Las Vegas residency will feature two unique shows in one intimate venue. This is at the theatre at the new Park MGM Resort. Now, one show will be called Lady Gaga Enigma, and it will feature her pop hits built as an experience and then uh, wow. while the other show will be titled Lady Gaga Jazz and Piano Ooh. and it will feature stripped down versions of her hits as well as music from the great American songbook. I think that's going to be amazing. That's the one I want to see. Yeah. The jazz. I would want to see jazz. the jazz because her voice is just so rich. You I mean, oftentimes she's been don't... producing and writing for years I before know. she arrived mm. on the scene as a performer which blows my mind. Yeah. But no, put this in perspective. Is, is Las Vegas your swan song? Like a residency like that 
Or is no, it just such a massive so paycheck yeah. that you I think you're like, that okay, did Britney huge. change that? You would think that it was a swan song, but J-Lo went there and her career just skyrocketed <laughs> afterwards. Oh, Britney, Britney back. however, did she come back? I don't know. Guys, mm -hmm. yesterday, left, man. yesterday what, uh, Slave for You was like 17 years old. I saw that somewhere. Slave. Oh, yeah. uh, well, I yesterday, like um, yeah. I think, was a huge day because we touched on the fact that Beyonce's Vogue covers had been released. And, of course, it's not only stole our eyes, but it stole our hearts as well. Beyonce revealed in a rare interview with Vogue magazine that she had an emergency cesarean section when she delivered her twins in June oh, 2017. The singer, in a series of essays in September, uh, the September issue, rather, says that she was 218 pounds, which is around 99 kilos and was swollen from toxemia, which is a potentially oh. dangerous pregnancy complication characterized by high blood pressure. Mm. Now, the 36-year-old adds, after giving birth, the twins spent many weeks in intensive care, oh. and her husband, Jay-Z, was a strong support system. And while mm. Beyonce admits that she put pressure on herself to lose weight in the three months after the birth of her first child, Blue Ivy, she happily revealed, after the twins, she approached things a lot differently. She says, during my recovery, I gave myself self-love and self-care, and I embraced being curvier. She says, I accepted that my body, or rather what my body wanted to be, and after six months, I started preparing for Coachella. In awesome. saying that, the 36-year-old reveals that uh, she has a little mommy pouch, uh. and she says she's in no rush to get rid of it. Amidst pregnancy rumors based on photos and videos of Bee performing during her and Jay-Z's On The Run 2 tour, uh, she says, whenever I feel ready to get my six-pack back, I will go into <laughs> Beast mode. <laughs> I will work my butt off, but until then, I'm happy with where I am. So you know what I love about what, cool. what she just did there, and like Serena Williams also did yesterday, yeah. posting on um, Instagram that what she's been going yeah. through yeah, postpartum yeah. and the fact that she's been putting so much strain on herself yeah. to just be this super, super woman to everyone. And just forgetting that, you know, she's a normal human being at the end of the day exactly. and giving other, and other women courage birth. out there. But yes. that's the, the do that. thing so is, that is amazing. especially with, with prem births or emergencies in that space, you yeah. obviously know how, how you go into this bubble, but there are so many people feeling like they're going through this singular journey and that's no one else who can relate to them. Yeah. Just them reaching out like that on that level is awesome. And I think Jay-Z might actually be Black Panther. I just have a feeling. Just we don't know. But I'm, more fire and more power to those ladies out there empowering not only uh, the world at large, but empowering the sisters out there. It is Women's Month after all. Here, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, tomorrow it is Women's Day, the day we commemorate the events of 1956 when 20,000 women marched against the past two Pretorius Union buildings. And it's also a very special year as Mum Albertina Sisulu is celebrating her centenary, and of course, to honor her, a woman of fortitude, we are also using the month of August to celebrate Women's Month yeah. on your Feel Good Breakfast show and yeah. to take a look at some of the iconic sheroes and some of the wise words that they've shared with us. Yep, and today's woman of fortitude is none other than uh, a former public protector and professor of law, advocate Tuli Madonsela, who said, how can we reimagine South African democracy? How can we hope for ethical and accountable leadership Together we have an opportunity to start a new era. Let us collaborate to build the South Africa we dream of. Oh, I absolutely love that part where she says, let us collaborate mm. to build the South Africa we dream of. And it certainly will take more than one individual to do that. So as we salute the role and changing and the hard work of the brave woman of South Africa, we wish you a happy Women's Day for tomorrow. And indeed, let us all collaborate to build that South Africa that we dream of. And I believe we're doing that one step at a time, especially by introducing you to beautifully talented people such as Taryn Lamb, Johan. Of course, a brand new offering called Mal Urio is now out and available. And we are so privileged to share in that music with you this morning. Thank and you. Uh, here she is with a song called Gie Verlies. Die reen geval die vloed steeg op 
Het bovenhoor maar op een rood Vat jou vast of vat jou liefde Geen minuut geheel verlies Ek schreef, ek wil vergeet Vat die zeker en die zonne Alles wat ons saam gedoen het It's my feel good birthday show. Happy birthday, a very happy birthday to you. Oh, you know what this song means. As ridiculous as it is, if it's your birthday, we want to wish you a happy, happy birthday as we welcome the 8th of August, the 8th of the 8th, 2018. Yeah. Uh -huh. So let's see who's celebrating their birthday today. Roger Federer. He oh, turns 37 today. He holds a record of 20 Grand Slam single titles, the most of any male player, and also holds the record for most time spent at number one in the world, a total of 310 weeks, almost six years. Well, 37 today. He is one of the greatest sportsmen alive at the moment. The fact that he's had this kind of resurgence in his career, amazing. Yeah. This is mind-blowing to me, mm. all right? There is a guy, he launched himself on YouTube, okay? Mm. 
He's had massive hits. Stitches, uh, Treat You Better, In My Blood, his big one. Sean Mendes. Is it Mendes? 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 Mendes. Mendes. I always say Mendes. I think Mendes. It's turning 20. What? 20? <laughs> no way. Get out. Well, Just, if you think that's... Come on. <laughs> that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. Well, you know what? There's someone else also having a very, very special birthday. And we would love to wish one of our young viewers, and that's Usman oh, Abrams, my goodness. a happy first birthday. Oh, oh my goodness. Earthman Abrams. How sweet. How unbelievably <laughs> cute. Oh, listen. Oh, happy man. birthday, Uthman. Mom and Dad, thank you for sending through that photo. And of course, if you have a loved one you'd love to have wished on your Feel Good Breakfast show, feel free to let us know. Send us a photo. Let us know how old they are. Maybe it's your birthday and feel free to do that. You can always head on over to our social media, especially Twitter at Expresso Show. Thank you so much, guys. Now, 62 years ago, on the 9th of August, five women historically led 20,000 others to the union buildings to protest past laws that were tearing families apart. Now, one of these women, Mama Albertina Sisulu, uh, of course, she's hailed as a woman of fortitude this year for her centenary commemoration. The official National Women's Day celebration held by the Department of Arts and Culture is taking place at the Mbukwini Rugby Stadium in Paul tomorrow, the 9th of August, and we are joined by the Director General of the Department of Arts and Culture, Mr. Vusamuzi Mkize, to share more ahead of this incredible occasion. Mr. Mkize, so good to have you on the show this morning. Oh, good. Thanks very much for having me, Leanne. I think tomorrow is going to be a wonderful day as we celebrate Women's Day and Women's Month, but what do you think it is about the 2018 Women's Day that just makes it so special? Yeah. I think you've, you've put it um, quite correctly that uh, it coincides with 100 years of Mama Solo. Yeah. And um, it was not by mistake to choose her as a woman of fortitude, um, a woman who, while being a nurse, being a mother, but also was able to transcend the stereotypes of um, both racist regime as well as chauvinism, and, um, and still just maneuver in between all these roles yeah. in pursuit of justice, freedom, and liberty and she was extremely brave and she represents that generation. Yeah. And, and that is why 2018 will then remind us of what it means to lead as a woman, mm -hmm. but also to be able to stand up for the rights of others. Yeah, I mean that mm -hmm. 1956 March still has such an enduring impact on women today. But why do you think it's so important for us to honor our leaders like Mama Albertina Sisulu and all the others that joined her in that march? Mm -hmm. Mama Sisulu, Lillian Goyi, Helen Joseph, um, uh, Raima Musa, all these women were women who, when J.G. Stradom thought that uh, they are dealing just with ordinary liberation people who are just weak and who can be just trampled upon, these women then showed that liberty is not only led by men, mm -hmm. But liberty and freedom and justice is a quest by all. And that women are not going to sit on the sidelines and watch as the rights of the citizens of South Africa are being trampled upon by such a cruel and a brutal regime at that time. Remember, at that time it was uh, extremely unfashionable, danger, almost dangerous to criticize government. But with the past laws, it was getting too far because it was a very clear system to separate and destroy families and family units, but most importantly, just to push the agenda that would say you are beneath a white race, we are bigger than you, and therefore then, and coinciding also with all these um, migrant labor laws, it was just such a brave mm. moment, yeah. proud moment for women alone to stand up and say this far and no further. And Mama Sulu, uh, Lillian Goyol and Joseph represent that generation, which then I think will assist with the younger generation who face a new struggle today compared to what they faced yeah. of, um, of rape, abuse. And I think they should be able to look at that and take a leaf and say, there are things that you can just not do to us. Mm. Powerful stuff. I love that. Now, the event tomorrow is happening in Paul at the Mbukwini Rugby Stadium. Why the decision to host the Women's Day celebrations in Paul? Not necessarily because it's Paul. Mm. 
is that the term, when the department looked at how we can move around yeah. and uh, take one um, national day from one province to another, national days are for everybody, are yeah. for all. Yeah. And therefore then, uh, PAL, uh, however, looking at some of the challenges they face, it was felt that uh, it would be helpful to begin to uplift that community, awesome. uh, bring the president, because there's a president who is a keynote uh, at a speaker there, but it brings government closer to the people, right. and then government and the president is clear, let us show that we care. And we go to these communities that are not necessarily affluent and everything else, but have to realize the beauty and the benefit of the liberation that we have today. Mm. And we take government to the people. I love that. I yeah. absolutely love that. Talking about the program of events, do you have a little sneak peek of what we can expect tomorrow? Oh, yes. Uh, tomorrow, uh, the first thing is that in the morning, uh, the president, uh, President Ramaphosa, will be hosting um, the veterans of the strike with the women, mm. having a very special moment um, of breakfast with them. Wow. And then thereafter, we will have then the big day. But that big day also then will be addressed by the president, but there will be Minister of Women, uh, Minister Batamil uh, Lamini, um, and other, a number of other ministers. But then we'll have wonderful cultural program featuring mainly uh, the women uh, so that um, they really celebrate because this is more of a celebration yeah. than a commemoration. Yes, yes. It's a celebration of heroism oh, that, uh, that the women of South Africa have been able to display in face of adversity. Yeah. So we're looking forward to, to tomorrow oh, I love uh, and this yeah. evening we've got a social dialogue mm -hmm. um, where we discuss issues and SFM will be there. It will be a live broadcast at Cape Peninsula in Belleville campus. Um, so we are going to have all those events as a build up to tomorrow, wow. the big day. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Vusamuzim Kize, the Director General for the Department of Arts and Culture, for being with us today and giving us a sneak peek into what's going to be taking place tomorrow at the official National Women's Day celebration. And, of course, this is happening at the Mbukwini Rugby Stadium in Paul. President Silva Ramaphosa is going to be the keynote address. Uh, uh, the mm -hmm. official address is going to be done by him, and uh, it starts at 9 a.m. Make sure that you are there as we celebrate uh, all of the incredible sheroes that have brought us to where we are in our incredible country today. Thank you very much, Land. Let's quickly take a last look at your news headlines on your Wednesday morning, making your national news. Land expropriation, South Africa's ailing economy and gender-based violence are some of the issues which are expected to be discussed during the Cabinet Lakotla in Pretoria this week. Communications Minister Nomvula Makonyane said that plans on how to implement land expropriation without compensation will be discussed. Last week, the ANC's national executive resolved to amend the constitution to allow for expropriation without compensation. Mokunyane said Cabinet will also develop a stimulus package for the economy, which will primarily focus on the inclusion of women and young people. And the Deputy Minister in the Department of Cooperative Government and Traditional Affairs, Andres Nell, says through the Municipal Infrastructure Support Agents, they have been working intensely with the bottom third municipalities that lack the capacity to render basic services to help them out of the distressed state where they can get the basics right. They are working together with other national departments and provincial treasuries to further diagnose the problems in those municipalities and to develop recovery plans. And making international news this morning, at least 34 people are reported to have died in a fresh outbreak of Ebola in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The dead include a healthcare worker, the World Health Organization has said. Officials are scrambling to contain the deadly virus in the rest of eastern parts of the country. It has been confirmed to be the Zaya strain of the virus and vaccinations of health workers may start as early as today. It is the 10th Ebola outbreak in the country. And lastly, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has told Zimbabwe's President Emerson Nangagwa in a telephone conversation that he must rein in his security forces after six people were killed in election violence, UN spokesperson Farhan Haq said yesterday. Guterres also spoke by phone with opposition leader Nelson Chamisa to urge him to turn to the courts and not the streets if he plans to challenge Mnangagwa's election victory. The Secretary General made it clear that he was uh, counting on Mnangagwa to ensure that the security forces show maximum restraint, said Farhan Haq. And that's where we leave your news headlines on your Wednesday morning for your Fuel Breakfast Show.
Let's kick it off with Cricket One final time. Form being rewarded and an opportunity to build a senior leadership team in the absence of Faf Duplessis for the rest of the Proteus Tour of Sri Lanka. Given his first leadership role in the senior setup, Quinton de Kock will captain the side for the remainder of the ODIs as the team push for that series whitewash, starting with a win today in Candy, match kicking off at 11, before closing it out on Sunday in Colombo, and that's where they'll stay for the T20s, with JP Dermany leading the tour's batting charts with 177 runs, taking over the captain's reins. Then our PSL champions, Mamelodi Sundowns, have their first win under the belt, beating Polokwane City 2-0. Nascimento netting his second in as many games, and Lebohang Mabue getting his first for the Brazilians. And that while Bidvest Vitz cruised to a 3-1 dominance of Kaiser Chiefs at FNB last night, knowing the value of early points when mounting a title campaign, convincing strikes from Khoto, Zvoka Manja and Matupa, opening some space for the clever boys at the top of the early table. On the other end of a very unforgiving spectrum, pressure already mounting on Chiefs' new coach, Giovanni Salinas. Then tonight, Free State Stars take on Maritzburg. Baraka entertain Cape Town City. Pirates are in Nelson Mandela Bay to face Chipper and Supersport. Take on Amazulu at the Lucas Moripe Stadium. And after Masat Sansa's season opening loss to Cape Town City, their new commander-in-chief, Caetano Tembo, still adamant they've got some shopping to do before the transfer window closes at the end of this month. Of course, speaking of transfers, even less time available to the English Premier League teams, most notably Chelsea's new manager, Maurizio Sarri, who now has less than two days to find a replacement for Thibaut Courtois as the Belgium international failed to report to training and is widely expected to move to Real Madrid. Also linked to the Spanish giants, um, countryman Eden Hazard has at least been spotted at training. And while Leicester City and Man United get the league underway at Old Trafford on Friday, Chelsea will open their account on a bumper roster on Saturday against Giants laying Huddersfield, that at the John Smith Stadium. That's a wrap of our sport for this Wednesday morning. Let's take a final look at the roads in Gauteng and Houghton. There's been an accident. This is on the M1 northbound before the Glenhove and is currently causing more than 20 minute delays from Xavier Street. And that's where I leave your traffic for this morning. Don't fear the flu. Boost your immune system with Effaflu C Immune Booster by Pharma Dynamics. Effective, affordable healthcare. Running through your temperatures for a last time on your Wednesday morning and we can most certainly feel that winter chill all across the country this morning. It is nice and cold. Sutherland minus four this morning, so stay warm out there. Your temperatures, Polokwane nine minimum with a maximum 23 degrees. Mombela 11, 18. Pretoria 826. Johannesburg 724. Maikeng 11 with a high of 26 degrees. Klagsdorp 920. Kimberley 5 and a high of 16. Bloemfontein 2 minimum, your maximum 15. Richards Bay 11, 19. Peter Marisburg 4 and a high of 16, Durban 12, 18, Tata five, uh, 4 this morning with a maximum 15, East London 7, 16, Craddock minus 1 this morning with a maximum 13, Port Elizabeth 7, 15, George 5 and a high of 14, Sutherland minus 4 this morning and a cold 7 degrees maximum, Cape Town 7, 14, Worcester 1, 13, Springbok 0 this morning with a maximum 14 and Uppington starting off on 2 minimum, your maximum 18 degrees. And that's a wrap of your weather and your temperatures for your Wednesday morning. So hopefully by now we have learned this and taught you this on the show. Doing good and giving back has never been as simple. You can make a very quick donation to Chalk, the Childhood Cancer Foundation, by using your SnapScan app. All you need to do is install and register on SnapScan and get started. Yep. You simply yep. just scan the QR code, eh? Mm. It's that simple. Well, join us as we raise funds and donate to the Chuck Pretoria home because we want to make sure that we support, you know, these children and yeah. their families who yeah. suffer with cancer. It's very, yeah. very important. And if you're looking to do so, that Snap Scan QR code will be visible on your screen for the next hour. So you'll be seeing it pop up uh, very soon and it'll be available for you to go out there and make a difference. We're helping to keep more than hope alive. And if you're looking for more details and information, do visit our website, expressoshow.com. Snap it. Every day that brave young kids and their families battle cancer, the Chuck Childhood Cancer Foundation supports them. And here at Expresso, we'd love you to help us fund their newest Chuck home in Pretoria. SnapScan makes it easy to donate. Download the app, scan the code, and donate. For more details, visit the Expresso website.
All right, we're going to be taking a very quick break. Stick around. It's been a feel-good Wednesday at that. Hope you've been enjoying it. It's nice and cold, eh? Oh, it is. Wow, Cape Princess, Town how's about another cup level. of coffee there, my dear? Listen, we're going to continue. Lots more heading your way over the next hour. We have our chefs on speed dial, Chef Jenny Morris and Chef Tash as well. They are here to answer all of your culinary questions. 021-430-9881. Call us. That's right. And, of course, we need to find out how Taryn Lamb dips her Oma. All that more coming up on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Stand a chance of following in the footsteps of your favorite presenter search on three contestant by winning a trip for two to Reunion Island. Spend seven nights in five-star luxury at the Akoya Hotel and Spa, including economy flights from Joburg on Air Austral and car rental for a week, all courtesy of the Reunion Tourism Board. To stand a chance of winning, tell us where the presenter search on three finale was held. Was it one, Reunion Island, or two, Mauritius? SMS the keyword Reunion plus your name, city and answer, one or two, to 33728. That's 33728 at one rand fifty per SMS. No free SMSs apply. Entrants must be over 18 and hold a valid South African passport. T's and C's apply and can be found on presentersearch on 3.com. on your cell phone culinary hotline bling that can only mean one thing yes we're living it up living it up on a wednesday morning and you know what time it is it's time for the culinary hotline bling sing 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 we've got chef tash and jenny morris joining us as well and standing by of course to answer all of your burning foodie questions if you have any culinary conundrums bothering you please call us on 021-430-9881 chef tash chef jenny how are you this morning very well. How are you? And how are you? I'm awesome. very, very well. I've had a fantastic week so far, except yesterday. Uh, my son got his, his six-week shots. And oh, I nearly cried. But that's a story for another day. We're keeping things beautiful and delicious in the kitchen, oh, yeah. taking those questions. I'm looking forward to whatever that is, that recipe that seems to involve Fried chicken, wings yes. and crumbs. Okay, but let's... Let's look at the questions that came in, shall yes. we? Uh, from Halima Bibi Gani on Facebook, who said, how many cups of self-raising flour in a 500 gram packet? I'd like to uh, make up self-raising flour. Thank you very much. So I'm assuming uh, she'd like to know the ratios if you yes. are going to be making your own self-raising flour. Sort of flour. baking powder and salt yes. um, to the thing. So what, I mean, we, we both know what it is. I'm gonna let you say it. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> All right. So. Um, in a 500 grams packet, you get um, two cups um, mm -hmm. and, and just a bit. Because yeah. in a one kg, you get about just cups, about seven yeah. cups. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yes. okay. So that, that's how much it is. And if you yeah, are gonna be making light. your own, yes. Remember it's light, so yeah. it's not, that's weight. And then the cup is sort of volumetric yes. because yes. you sift it's it. Heavy. So mm. it looks like there's a lot like in a it, lot but it's not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Correct. All right. So if you were going to be making your own, uh, is, is it a combination of uh, flour and? One cup to? One cup to one teaspoon of baking powder. Yes. So um, that um, that makes you that, that gives you the self raising flour because your baking powder is your rising agent. Yes. So and it's important that you sieve everything yes. because mm -hmm. you need it evenly distributed. Because okay. if you just spoon it and just mix it, it's going it's not going to be evenly distributed. So your bake is not going to rise up as beautifully as quickly. And a tiny yeah. little bit of salt. Okay. Yes. A quarter of a teaspoon. All right. Of salt. So if your recipe does call for self raising flour and you don't have any at home, don't go. Oh! 
let's yeah. try the dish. No, you've got the ingredients, you've heard the recipe and the ratios. All right, we've got a caller on the line, Mrs. Rousseau uh, from Cape Town, I believe. Good morning, Mrs. Rousseau. Morning, Kat. Morning, Cruz. Morning. Listen, yeah, I just want to know if you can freeze bananas and how, if you can, how do you go about it? Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Mrs. Rousseau. I love bananas personally. Yes. Uh, my answer would be freeze them for as long as you as, as you can, until you can eat them. Well, Freeze them until you can eat them, basically. About, they only last about four months yes. um, in, in the freezer. Okay. Um, and you can do them whole or... Sliced. Or sliced. Yes. yes. Okay. Ready for a smoothie. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, in fact, if you're going to... Um, it's better to slice them up because, mm -hmm. as you know, there's a, a huge water content in your banana. So yes. when you do them whole, it sort of is um, difficult to chop them up. Mm -hmm. And when you slice them up, you put them on a parchment paper. Um, and as soon as they freeze, yes. you can put them in your bag. Yes. That's open brilliant. Freeze. Yes. That's open brilliant. freeze. Because yes. then they're separate. Yeah. Yes. Because I, I chopped my bananas up and then I had them in a little lunchbox, put them yes. in the freezer. And I'm, yes. I'm assuming four months must have surpassed because when I opened it, it was just rock hard and there was just syrup all over. <laughs> It's ridiculous. But you know what's nice, Kat? Those little rings, if you yeah. add some yogurt to it and you do this, you get like a, an instant banana ice cream. <gasps> Lovely. Mm. Really Look nice. Yeah. Okay, we've got Llewellyn on the line uh, from somewhere. Go free start. Now, good morning, Llewellyn. Morning, how are you? Very well. Where in the free state are you calling us from? I'm from Winburg and 13 kilometers before Bluestone on the way to Cape Town. Darse, <laughs> Darse. It must be super cold there, you oh, insist. Yeah. All right, so what is your culinary conundrum this morning? I want to know how to freeze a stew that contains potatoes and zucchini uh, baby marrows. Oh, great stuff. Because they always mm -hmm. say okay. it's soggy and the potatoes get sour. I don't know. Yes, <laughs> and you work hard for that stew, Luan, and you spend hours and hours. You don't want to let it go to waste. So <laughs> how to... They're working very hard. You just, you just touched my heart right now because I, I, I do know the pain of working hard over a dish and yes, then it doesn't you just work. happen to freeze it for too long and when you bring it out, it's just it's ruined and working. there was so much of it. Do you want to do the potatoes? Potato. All right, um, potatoes are not a very good vegetable mm -hmm. to freeze, unfortunately. Okay. Um, but as you know, if you blanch them, quickly blanch them for like, um, what, two minutes, and mm -hmm. then you shot them, they freeze nicer. Okay. And um, the, content, the, the, the actual structure of the potato changes, unfortunately, when you mm -hmm. freeze it. Mm -hmm. um, it's yes, sugars, yeah. it's, yes, it's all the sugar in, in, in that. Okay. So when you, it's, it's best to freeze your skew and to have your veggies separately. Okay. But you can do it, but you are going to get that mushy, um, yeah. chalky yeah. feel. But you see, what's really nice about courgettes is they're lovely fresh and they're lovely eaten instantly, but they've got a very high water content. So yes. I would treat it a little bit like an aubergine where you put some salt on it and degorge it, get some yes. of that liquid out. Okay. And cook them separately. Um, fry them off in the pan and yeah. then bring them into the stew if you want them in that stew. But I think what our um, uh, viewer is saying, the caller is saying, is he's already cooked it into That's the stew. Yes, yes exactly. So um, maybe just follow that little step, you know. Do the courgette separately and introduce it close to the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and then sure. I, I say the otherwise. By the time you you defrost that stew and you're having it and it's terrible, just remember what it tasted like when you made it first. Yeah. I, I just don't like throwing it away. I just no, can't. Exactly. Like, don't waste food. <laughs> don't do just have more rice <laughs> to soak up all that water. All right, uh, we're going to take a little quick break, uh, but we'll keep our lines open. 021430 We'll be back again with the culinary hotline. Bling! Ting, ting, ting! Ting, ting right here too, because I've got the gorgeous Taryn Lamb with me, and it's time for our Dipper Oma moment. Now, as you can see on our Dipper Oma wall, of fame over here. Everybody showed us their dips from Jimmy Nevis. Um, of course, we had a whole lot of people here. We had oh, it's too many to mention. But now, Taryn, this is your moment to show us how you dip your oma. But before we do that, we're in the grip of winter. Yes. It's cold up in here. Very cold. How do you choose to stay cozy in winter? I live in my gown and my pajamas. Oh. When I don't have to leave the house, yeah. that's exactly yeah. what I do. I light the fire, I drink a lot of tea, yeah. and that's me. Do you have one of those like really cozy, <laughs> thick, fluffy chunky. ones? I'm about that life. And then I also put the hoodie on sometimes, <laughs> and then I'm just sitting there in my bed. <laughs> oh, I love it, I love it. Okay, so we've got our box of omaras mm. here. There are a few in the selection. What is your favorite box of omaras, or your favorite flavor, let me, let me rather the say? The buttermilk. You I like the buttermilk? I buttermilk do. Is 
like winning right now. It is amazing. Yes. Well. It makes you eat like more than one of them. Oh, okay. I'm the only one who clearly loves <laughs> muesli, but like I'll be the brand ambassador for muesli. It's all good. Mm. All right. So now is your moment, Miss Lamb. What, or rather, what is your Dipper Oma uh, dip called? Um, this one is called the pout. The pout? Oh, how yeah. does the pout go? Show me, show me. Well, because it's going to break, so you kind of want to just keep it like... Keep it like, mm, oh. and you just like dunk it there. And just like lift your fingers up. And you so you want to be cute it. while you're doing this. Yes. Okay, so this is called the pot dip. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. In three, two, and one. Th this pot is not Oleg after this, no? <laughs> now and this then we pot, eat it. <laughs> and this pot not Oleg. Mmm. <laughs> I love it. Um, I love it so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Karen. The mm -hmm. pound dip, you saw it here first, and of course you can try it at home. Make sure that you uh, dip it, Oma, and of course using your favorite flavor of Oma, Russ. I'm going to continue eating this I baby this. before it breaks. I love this. So good. Cozy up this winter and dip it, Oma. How do you dip it, Oma? Well, it is a busy morning and we are about to take a very quick break. When we get back, we still have our chefs on speed dial. So if you've got a con con culinary conundrum, there we go, or an issue in the kitchen, feel free to call us. Our lines are open. It's 021-430-9881. And then, of course, we'll talk about parenting advice, how to make healthy eating fun for those little ones. Amanda Ferreira is a clinical dietitian and she's on the show this morning. Moment in between with Maca Fay. See you after the break. It's my feel-good worth show. Call us on your cell phone. Call in very hotline bling. That can only mean one it thing. It can only mean one thing. From bananas to self-raising flour, we've got you all covered on the culinary hotline bling. Ting, ting, ting. And you can be part of the conversation. <laughs> Give us a call on 021-430-9881. And uh, hit us up with your most burning foodie questions. Like this one, ladies. Are you ready for this one? Chef Tash, yes. Jenny Morris, you ready? Ah, we're ready. Right. Here we go. Uh, this one was about how to make a very simple bread pudding, and was, it was asked by Jasmine Muto on uh, Facebook. So, how do you make a simple bread pudding? It starts with Sasko, hey? Yes. <laughs> Sasko and clover care yes. with cream, eggs, and sugar. sugar yes. So, um, the cream, the milk, and the sugar is your basis for custard. Mm -hmm. a beautiful. Homemade custard. It has to be homemade. Oh yes. yes, yes. Okay, so as simple as that. Do you just beat, how, beat, how do you, beat, yes beat, beat the beat. eggs? Soak, soak, soak. But we each have our own secret ingredient to make it special. Great I like tell. to use dried fruit sometimes. Yes. I like to take peaches and rehydrate them and turn it peachy with a couple of. Um, 
cranberries. Oh, yes. Um, I like mine a bit spicy. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know cayenne pepper yes. and ah. your chili flakes? No. Oh, that's nutmeg. Nice. No. So just a yes. little bit of heat. heat. In the pudding. In the Why not? Pudding. With the cayenne. Oh, yes, and darling. The ah. Yes. Uh, and uh, vanilla and cinnamon. I oh, yes. never expected it. I, I would love to taste that. <laughs> Chef Tash, could, could, could you beautiful. make me a batch? Oh, I don't know if I'm asking definitely. too much. For next most time. definitely. When you come around. Can you imagine custard with cayenne pepper? Yeah, it's just Tender. custard and heat. Yes. Beautiful. Oh. Hot <laughs> custard. Because I like hot custard, that's the thing. Okay, I'm getting carried away. Because it all sounds too delicious. Let's get this, uh, I don't know if, if we were able to get Muriel on the line. Uh, from Belha. I very much doubt it right now. So let's quickly take her question. Yes. She said uh, she has a lot of onions. She doesn't know what to do with them because they're going off and she doesn't want to lose them. What's the best way to preserve them? In the freezer. Freezer? Yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. simply just chop them up? Chop, slice, dice. But what I do with mine is, because I make lots of curries and things, yes. is I just put them in the pan and just caramelize them halfway. And then they freeze beautifully, beautifully because of the water content. You can actually even freeze them whole, yes. but you'd need to blanch them yes. for, until the core is, is hot. And that's yes. very difficult yes. to tell. Yes. 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 Well, about six minutes yeah. because okay. it's, it's a whole um, onion. Yes. But remember that it's not going to be as easy to slice because, uh, of course, it's going to change with the freezing. So you can blitz it, use it in skews, use it in an onion soup. French soup, mm. French Lovely. onion soup. Gorgeous. See, that's how. Gorgeous. That's why we, we get you as the experts here, because only an expert would know when an onion is only halfway caramelized. I mean, <laughs> what? Okay, <laughs> let's take a call. Um, Lorna from Cape Town. Very good morning, Lorna. Good morning. Thanks for a wonderful show, and thank you for taking my question. Oh, thank you for calling the culinary hotline. Bling! Sing, sing, sing! Lorna, the stage is all yours. What is your conundrum? I make jam, mm -hmm. and come winter, I am blessed to get a fairly big batch of several oranges. Yes. And the, the problem I have is trying to process them quickly. Okay. Because, you know, you make jam and you've got to, got to do a lot of stirring. So my question to Jenny Morris is, how can I freeze the oranges to make them last, let's say, at least another two weeks longer? Mm -hmm. So it gives me a longer time period in which to freeze the fruit. Okay. Mm. You know what? Um, I for my restaurant, I actually make this beautiful orange um, caramelized orange thing that goes onto the French kiss. And what we do is we get all the zest off. I actually freeze the zest, mm -hmm. and you can chop the fruit, um, and and you can freeze it in bags until um, it's time to put it together. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a lot of work, yes. um, but you can just prep it up front. I use potato peeler because you want some of that bitterness in yes. the pith. Oh. And, and, but chop it, otherwise it's very hard to yes. process it once it comes out of the freezer. Yes. Mm. Okay, so there you have it. Thank you so much, uh, Lorna, for that call. I see a boiling pot over there. I'm assuming oh, yes. that we are going to make some bap. Yeah. And South Africans love bab, <laughs> so whether it's I. with milk, with gravy, tomato, chala, it doesn't matter. Yes. Okay. So the question then came through from Jabu, uh, wanting to know, how do you cook bab? Well, um, you have different kinds of pup, as you said. Um, South Africans love their pup. Mm -hmm. So um, you have cremel pup, yes. which is crumbed pup, yes. um, which is a half and half. So you need um, it to steam. Quickly. I, I don't know if this is still the same in, in many households, but I remember when my grandmother taught me to make pup, there was always this one pup pot in the house. The yes. designated pup pot, man. Yes. And then there was always like the designated pup measure. <laughs> like you always know when you fill the pup pot to this level, yes. it's always it's with always this much good. flour. And then you don't even need to think about it. Just qui it. and then one, two, three, <laughs> pup comes out perfectly every time. But now they come in different sizes. There's stainless steel, cast iron, whatnot. The important thing is to always pay attention to your pup, Definitely. I believe. All the time. And um, you know that the, 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 the thing about the one pot that is designated for pup, yes. it normally doesn't have a thick base, so you take the most non-loved pot in the house. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the secret to a beautiful pup 
is a thick base so yes. that it can steam. Yes. And it keeps the heat and it's nice and moist. And then yeah. develops what we call le jojo. The crust. Le jojo. <laughs> and then you become is coco because yes. you, are, you are good at making butter. <laughs> we have to finish off with this one quickly. How quick, to. Quick. Somebody asked, how do we make crumbed chicken similar to that which you find in mainstream uh, industry? What is the recipe you, can you have? have? Mixed herbs, you want some garlic, salt, a little bit of heat. You could use paprika, cayenne pepper, but the secret is to not make it too smooth. You okay. want it to. That's how you get that lovely, bumpy, oh, chunky. Did you see that? Yes. So once you have yes. your, your mix of herbs and spices that's and it. flour, you add water, which uh, gives you those crumbs, and yes. once you roll your chicken in it, that's, that's where it. you. Listen. Lusty and it must be bumpy and yes. chunky. And then hot oil, get it in there until it's nice and golden on the oh, outside. Yes. And cooked properly may on I, the inside. Yes. May I please <laughs> taste one of those? Just to, just to, because oh, it's, I need to, for the for the nation. For the nation. <laughs> mm. Nice. Yes! Mm. It is wow. done! It is wow. done! Wow! <laughs> yes! Thank you very much. We'll be doing this again next week. Leave your questions on Facebook on next week's Culinary Hotline Bling! All right, so after we've messed up all of those pots, and including our, our favorite pot, pot, it's time to make every day, every Wednesday, your wash day. And we all have garments carefully stored away because they're reminiscent with memories of people, places, and occasions. And we know vintage is back, baby. So now it's that time to take care of those family inheritances um, and enjoy them. But I think this stands for a lot of people. You're a bit terrified to wash them. So here are some very helpful hints. Powder and MAC Soft Fabric Conditioner are your go-to products to thoroughly clean and care for these garments, restoring them to their former glory and making them ready to be used and enjoyed again and again. Absolutely. So let's get into those tips. Tip number one, MAC Auto Washing Powder has been specifically formulated to give top performance in your front loader washing machine. It contains a high effective uh, active uh, detergent combined with a range of enzymes to efficiently clean and safely remove stains. And if you are washing by hand or in a top loader, MAC Hand Wash Powder is super strong with a high foam level to thoroughly remove stains. And then MAC Soft Fabric Conditioner combines a gentle softening agent to lubricate and condition fibers, making garments soft and comfortable to wear and leaving garments with a clean and fresh smell. Then I know you wear a lot of chiffon. Um, Absolutely. You're washing your, your chiffon garments with care. If washing by machine, place garments in a pillowcase to prevent snagging and damage during the wash. Use cool temperatures and a light spin. Just take extra care. Or if washing by hand, which is preferable, wash in a sudsy solution of MAC hand wash powder in cool water. Rinse thoroughly and dry in the shade. Just take extra care. Absolutely. And then the next tip, satin. You're a satin man. You yeah. love your satin. Now, satin is machine washable, all right, despite its delicate nature. Now, when washing a satin garment, turn it inside out before placing it in the machine. And then use a low temperature with MAC auto washing powder and also use Use a very light spin or no spin whatsoever. Then iron while damp on the reverse side to restore the sheen. And then I know you're a big fan of your velvets. So when Every washing day. your velvets, start by checking the care label first. We always <laughs> say it. If machine washable, use MAC Auto in a cool hand wash or very delicate cycle. Turn the garment inside out before washing it to protect the fibers. Do not spin, rather leave it to air dry. Absolutely, and then Graham's go-to piece when he goes out at night, lace. Of yes, course. not all lace though is washable, Graham. If uh, very delicate, it is very delicate, and if, especially if the garment is, you get it professionally cleaned, rather. Okay. Now alternatively, a gentle wash by hand in a sudsy solution of MAC hand wash powder, but do not wring, pull, or twist, rather gently squeeze the suds through the fabric, just like that. Then rinse thoroughly and dry in the shade. Now, let's remove yellow of old garments. This is for those white cotton and linen pieces only. Add two tablespoons of MAC thick bleach to five liters of water. Be exact. Soak clothes overnight. Rinse and wash as normal then with your MAC auto washing powder. If the bleach smell remains in the fabric after washing, rewash and rinse thoroughly before drying. Never use a bleaching agent on synthetic fabrics. I say that emphatically. Absolutely. And there we have it. Some great tips for those delicates of yours. But remember, make, uh, MAC makes your wash day just a little bit easier. And we're making it easy for you to win a MAC hamper every single week. And there you can see it right now. Now, to stand a chance of winning, SMS the keyword MAC to 33728. SMSs are charged at 1 Rand 50. No free SMSs apply. And TNCs can be found on expressoshow.com. Now, just keep in mind, this week's giveaway ends at midnight this coming Friday. MAC washing powder works really hard on tough stains, so you don't have to. 
making it easy for you to shine. This is really exciting for me for when I'm babysitting. Parenting advice coming up. Amanda Ferreira is a clinical dietitian and she'll be here telling us some tips on how to make healthy eating fun. Aha, uh -huh. and if you don't have a bun in the oven, don't worry because we're going to be whipping up some chakalaka and baked bean buns in the kitchen. That's coming up after the break. Don't miss Afternoon Express live at 4.30 on SABC3. Today we catch up with the recording artist Java, who recently returned from Los Angeles, where he did South Africa proud by winning the Viewer's Choice Best International Act at the 2018 BET Awards. And for all you dog lovers out there, it's another edition of our pet adoption segment. And we have another adorable pup looking for a home. That's Afternoon Express weekdays at 4.30 p.m. on SABC3. Stage is yours. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to your feel-good breakfast show, Expresso on SABC3. Thank you so much for starting the morning with us. Now, nutrition can sometimes be tough with children, but it all starts from the very beginning. Maternity can be a very stressful time for mothers and often lead to fatigue and feeling worn down. And so it's very important that during this time we take care of ourselves, we take care of our mommies and use the right kind of supplements to support energy levels and overall health while strengthening the immune system. Now, Biostrath assists daily with improved focus, energy, stamina, immunity, and recovery while providing mothers with daily vitamins and minerals and amino acids that they need during pregnancy and breastfeeding. And this morning, we speak to parenting expert and co-author of Pregnancy Sensemic Forum uh, on maternity and the supplementation needed during this time. And a very, very important time it is, it is. Meg. Especially when you think, and I mean, I, it was an education for myself as well, mm. going to every doctor's visit and finding out what the body goes through yeah. during pregnancy. Yeah. But uh, for, I guess, those who haven't yet experienced it mm. or learned about it, what does mm. the body go through? So there's never a time in life that your body goes through as much of a change as it does in pregnancy, obviously. And, you know, most of us think about how we're having to provide the nutrients for our baby. But what some of us don't know is that we actually will actually forfeit our own nutrients in order to build our own babies. Yes. And so we literally are taking from our body the whole time. In addition to that, we have to grow an entire new organ, which is the placenta. And, and we do that in the first three months of pregnancy. In fact, the first few weeks of pregnancy. Mm. So any moms who are feeling completely exhausted and spent in yeah. that time, they must understand they're actually building not just a human baby, but actually this placenta as well. Yeah. And then you also have to produce 40% extra blood. Um, and so that's a huge amount more blood and your heart has to pump this around the body. So mm -hmm. if you think about what's actually going on in your body, it's no wonder we're so exhausted in those first three months. Absolutely. And then even post-pregnancy, once baby mm -hmm. has arrived, um, we've spoken about it before during Breastfeeding Awareness Week, the importance of breastfeeding a child when it is possible to do so and the benefits mm -hmm. of doing so for the first six months, hopefully exclusively. Um, why would you say it is so important? What is your take on it, breastfeeding our children? So breast milk is magical. You know, it really is perfectly designed for human babies. It delivers absolutely everything they need. Um, and we're actually starting to find out that there's some magic elements of breast milk that we never really knew. I mm. mean, we always knew that it provided antibodies, so it builds your baby's immunity, which is one of the things that's important. But we also understand now that there's certain sugars in milk that actually feed um, our gut flora, so the little um, microbes that are in our gut. 
And that's very important and is now starting to be linked to things like metabolism and um, allergy development as well. So we're starting to understand that breast milk really is something that is perfectly catered for babies. Yeah, and I mean, I'm learning also just uh, yesterday we went for another scan and a weigh-in and shots and just, you know, he's growing beautifully mm. and this all just from breast milk, he's getting the right kind of weight at the right kind of time. Mm all just from breastfeeding. But are there any benefits then for mommy while breastfeeding? Yes, no, absolutely. So, I mean, we've all known that um, it's a good way to lose weight. I mean, yeah. mom's trying to get rid of that, that post baby kind of um, fat and, and so on. They mm. can, and breastfeeding's good for that. Um, but we're also now starting to understand that it actually can affect your metabolism for life. So it doesn't just change your body shape immediately after pregnancy, but can actually change your meta metabolism forever. Mm -hmm. It also decreases the risk of certain cancers as well and mm -hmm. type 2 diabetes. So there are a lot of reasons why moms really should be breastfeeding. Yeah. And of course, the number one thing for mom and baby is that bonding, you know, Absolutely. that amazing connection when you're feeding um, as, as, as your baby latches on and that oxytocin's released. It's a very special time. Yeah, I've been trying to do that with the bottle every now and then, kind of <laughs> Make the position, make it look like it might be a breast. But um, then, of course, the important question of what mom then takes into her own body mm. in order to provide that mm. uh, beautiful and healthy breast milk. What do you advise in terms of supplementing mommy's diet and what she should eat? So critically, she needs to drink more liquid. So that's mm. very important. And it needs to not be dehydrating liquids like caffeine and, and alcohol and so on. It really needs to be water, preferably. Yeah. Um, in pregnancy sense, we actually have a recipe for something we call wonder water, which is um, a lot of water, some rehydrate, and then actually you can pop some biostrath or, um, or, or, or you know, liquid supplement into there mm -hmm. to make it, to just give it a little bit more um, kind of goodness to it. Um, and that sort of thing is really important for um, when you're pregnant. In addition to that, you want to take in about 500 extra calories in a day. So that's like a handful of nuts and, and a quarter of a cup of, of um, biltong and, and some blueberries and a little bit of yogurt. You don't have to eat a huge amount more, obviously, but just a little bit more as well. Yeah, I, just, I think it makes you so aware and appreciative of the fact that even after babies arrived, the work doesn't end there. It absolutely Mommies doesn't. are still working hard yeah. every single day. Yeah. Uh, but thank you very much for enlightening us. We always appreciate your advice when you come around. Now with a hundred percent natural formulation and containing over 60 nutrients, Biostrath gives our bodies everything we need to stay healthy. Because it's natural, it's all natural, the nutrients in Biostrath are recognized by the body and by the body and are therefore easily absorbed. And Biostrath contains no artificial colorants, no flavorings, MSGs, uh, stimulants, preservatives or artificial sweetness. Biostrath, get what you need naturally. Only Biostrath gives your body more than 60 of the essential nutrients it needs every day. Biostrath, get what you need naturally. All right, so we're going to continue on that trend now of healthy eating for our little ones. In fact, for ourselves, we should all be considering this. Um, but I'd like to welcome clinical dietitians Amanda Rush Ferreira and Kath McGaw. Kath, you're one of my favorites. I've stolen so much information uh, from this term of knowledge. But thank you so much for joining us for a very, very vitally important conversation. That's, it's crazy for me that, that people don't approach it. And maybe we've got so much misinformation out there or commercial influence when it comes to healthy eating. But I'm going to ask you the, the important, obvious question. Why is it so important to instill healthy eating habits young, not just in babies, in toddlers, in children in general, do you think, Kath? I think one of the main reasons is that food is something you're never going to get away from. It's, going to, it's what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And it underpins so many aspects of your life, from health, from a medical point of view, to general mood, um, to how you behave, obviously body weight issues, it's got a psychological impact. So it's just, it affects every area of our constant. lives. It's the one constant. Absolutely. Um, and it does become such a psychological journey as well. I think we all have that. But um, when we look at the, those key developmental stages, when we speak about kids in preschool and upwards, what, what are the dietary guidelines from a nutritional perspective, Amanda? I think something that tends to be neglected a little bit is the balance in the meals. So it's very easy to go for the very sort of carbohydrate rich, refined carbs type of meals, things out of a packet, easy. which is totally understandable <laughs> because it is easy and they will eat it. Um, but you really want to go for something that's got a bit of protein in it. So we're looking at things like eggs, a little bit of chicken, maybe even some biltong. You want to go for a little bit of fat, a little bit of avocado, cream cheese, things like that. Um, and you really want to have, with every snack and meal, a little bit of fruit or a little bit of vegetables. Balance. Balance, totally. Um, I mean, we could be speaking to ourselves, <laughs> adults, <laughs> about this as well. Um, I think the big difficulty is 
getting children to enjoy healthy foods. Mm. How do we, do you have any quick fixes there to, to influence? Well, I think one of the early things you can do is don't use unhealthy foods as bribery to eat healthy yeah. foods because that immediately puts in their mind, I've got to do the unpleasant and then I get the pleasant. So never, so don't fall into that trap. Make healthy foods part of the home and that you enjoy because often I find parents themselves don't enjoy all the healthy foods and then they want their children to do it. And remember, children mirror what we do. Do as I do, not as I say. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So I think those are two very key factors to actually do what you want and then let them see you eating the foods. Children love to eat off your plates. I'm sure you find yeah, that with your little one. There's okay. nothing more exciting than eating what mom is eating or eating, especially what dad is eating. So I always say to parents, to introduce new healthy foods, do it from your plate. Don't make it your child's food, make it your family food. Some of us don't have a choice. <laughs> if they see us eating, that's, it's going to happen. Absolutely. Um, let's get real here, maybe, and, and instill a little bit of fear <laughs> to possibly motivate. What are some of the negative side effects of an unhealthy diet for a young child? Look, you have to remember with your children that every day their brains are developing, every day their organs are growing, every day their body is growing, and every day they need nutrients in order to do that. So if you're not nourishing them properly, their organs will be compromised, their brain growth will be mm -hmm. compromised, their IQ will be compromised. So it's not like an adult where we can withstand a little bit of malnutrition every now and then. It's a child that every day needs to be nourished. Sure. I mean, it didn't go that far to <laughs> terrify us. Yeah, no, but it's, um, thank you so much for saying that because it is, it is vitally important and every day mm. as a parent you're learning mm. these lessons. So don't judge yourself if you're not there yet. Yeah, totally. Maybe start with a personal journey. Start enjoying mm. your healthy foods yourself. Find ways of making it more exciting. I guarantee you, your young child will copy you. They've got those mirror neurons ready mm. to absorb that information. But if you start enjoying it, they'll start enjoying it. And set that in early. Do it right now. Righto, jumping into the kitchen with a gem. A gem this morning. Can we hear some noise for Zola Nene <laughs> in the studio? Yes. There's no one here, but there's Zola noise. <laughs> Nene is so good. She's real. She's here. It's so good to have you, Zola. Uh, Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Much, I've missed you guys. Yeah, we always miss you. We always uh -huh. miss you. But listen, we have a, a, a favorite for you this morning. Perfect for the braai, or even, I think, just to enjoy freshly baked with a topping of your choice. Zola's hashtag for the love of winter, chakalaka and, and uh, baked bean buns are a mix of South African tradition and uh, own hint of that Nene cooking flair as well. <laughs> now, judging by the look of it, it's a recipe that you don't want to miss out. And so here we go. Let's dig in. Yes. Zola Nene. Yes. Right, so you've got lots going on here. Lots going on. Lots We're going to make these um, chakalaka and bean buns. It's Look very, very simple. Great to have with um, a bowl of soup. Great as a starter bread. Just great as a snack. Too. Great, just like yeah, that. Just like that. Yes. Okay, start with some flour. You can use cake flour or you could use um, bread flour. All right. And then some yeast, active dry yeast, a bit of salt. On All the right. opposite side, because the salt will kill the yeast. Okay. Really? So just, yeah, so just but make sure dry. that you... They, they're both dry. They're both dry, but the salt kills yeast. So just keep them separate. Trust really? me. Really? <laughs> yeah, keep them separate. And then some sugar to feed the yeast. Okay. On the on the other end, like uh, the, closer the sugar, to the, the yeast. The sugar's friendly. This you is can getting put it, technical, Zola. You can put it wherever you want. It's getting technical um, now. Dried oregano just for flavor. That doesn't do anything to the yeast. That doesn't do anything to the yeast. Right. And then a bit of oil just okay. for a bit of flavor. Okay, mix that all up. Okay, well, hang on. You, you're mixing together everything anyways. Well, yeah, you're mixing everything together, but if you put the, the salt directly on the yeast, it'll start killing those yeast cells. You don't want to kill right. the yeast cells because they're what make the bread rise. So if you take yeast and you put salt and you put salt on the yeast, it's going to grow something or not? No, it's going to die. It's going to die. <laughs> You're not going to have some weird yeast you're, monster thing going on No, you're on not going to have a monster. You're going to have dead <laughs> yeast and salt. All right, so I just learned something today, which is phenomenal. <laughs> okay, Don't so put then, the salt with the yeast. Yeah, okay. so then mix in some um, warm water, or you could do this the day before and just do cold water and fridge ferment this. Right. So all you want to form is like a, a soft, pliable dough. Okay. Okay, so just add enough water. Obviously, that depends on where you are in the country and how much water you need. Okay, right. so keep and, and, mixing, and the, mixing, And how mixing. wet the water really and is. How, exactly, how much um, moisture. <laughs> how much water is in the water. How, how much, much moisture is <laughs> in the flour will absorb okay then you what you want to do is knead it for about 10 minutes until it's elastic and what we've like done this. here then you want to um cover it yes and let it prove so ferment until it's doubled in size and it'll come out looking like this and now for the star of the show is our filling 
Let's do it. Yes, our chakalaka and bean filling. So here okay, we go. So you take the baked beans. So we've got our Rhodes quality baked beans and, and tomato got, sauce. Yes, and I've got the Rhodes quality chakalaka, mild and spicy, or you could do the hot one. What I love most about the, the Rhodes product easy is that... Easy open lids. They're easy to open. <laughs> Look at <laughs> Who uses a tear almost, opener anymore? She almost sheds a tear. <laughs> I do, I do. So I'm going to... I want half of this and I want half of yours. Okay. And I'm just mixing it in with some cheese over there. There we go. Mm. Beautiful. Is that so good? The, yep. So the beans and tomato sauce will give us a lovely sweet flavor. Right on. And um, the chakalaka is nice and spicy and a little bit tangy. Mm. Okay. Just so like that. So now you. you're going to roll out this dough for me. Okay. That's so what roll it out into like a, a rough square, if you will. A rough square. So you can see it, it's it's all stretchy, it's elastic. Yeah. That's because we've we've let it um, rise for a bit. Well, I'm going for a circle. I don't know where's okay, your square. Okay, cool. We'll take a circle. <laughs> <laughs> Poetic license. We'll give it to you. Okay. So just a little bit thinner for me. So put you've got muscle. Put oh, it in. How it. thin do you want it, Come Zola? Come on, man. Do the damn thing. I didn't know you wanted that thin. Damn it! Be putting me under pressure on the <laughs> spot. Okay, there. Okay, that's. I don't know what type of circle that you were going for, but that doesn't look like. I a was circle going to for me. a square, actually. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get there. <laughs> you didn't get there. Okay, so it doesn't matter. I'm running really, out of kitchen space. It's, that's okay. It doesn't okay. matter what what um, shape it really is. That's fine. Um, just make sure you can stretch it and stuff because you've got the yeast, so it's a little more pliable. Yeah, so then you're gonna take your delicious. I promise I did go to primary school. Also, Chris, I know <laughs> what a square is. Okay. <laughs> take your filling and spread it all over this dough. All right. Oh, it smells wow. so good. Yes. I love these Rhodes um, quality products. Yeah. They just make life so much easier. I mean, you could make chakalaka from scratch, but it's you know the what? Lids, right? We lead very busy lives it's the lids. so using the road stuff is <laughs> fantastic what, what i said it? it's the lids right it's the, oh, easy it is, open lids. Um, the lids are everything to me <laughs> okay so then you want to start start rolling it up right to encase the filling okay, okay. just like that then once you get mm, to the edge mm, just pinch mm. like this and pinch the edges like work so, it yeah. work it zola so pink pinch and pinch and pinch okay <laughs> and then you want to divide it into buns because these are buns so right. cut it in half and this this will make about eight okay or, or, or six really big ones like i'm about to do okay and then into a greased muffin tin oh look yeah, at that no, i'm hearing oh size there's of groans there's size oh yeah it's uh, happening if you want to get your hands on the recipe it's very easy the keyword is roads sm is that 233728 that's roads 233728 to get your hands on the recipe oh, for yes. the beautiful chakalaka baked bean buns right and then you're going to pop, the, pop them in there and then brush it with a bit of oil just to um, make sure they brown really nicely. Cover them, leave them to double again right. in size, and then you'll bake them. 180 degrees, they'll take about 25 to 30 minutes depending on what size they are. Right. But what I want to tell you is that you could use any combination of the Rhodes quality products. Get so, creative, yeah. Exactly, so you could do um, the hot and spicy if you like a bit of spicy. You could leave out the baked beans if you wanted and just do chakalaka. You could just do baked beans and no chakalaka. I like a bit of cheese because I like a bit of cheese, but you don't have to have the cheese. <laughs> just, you like a bit of cheese just because saying. you like a bit of cheese. I do. I'm rather disappointed you didn't go for the hot and spicy with me in the kitchen. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. I I'm so sorry. You know, next time. I'll make you more buns. Next time, make me more buns. It's fine. Zola Nene in the kitchen. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, the Rhodes Quality hashtag for the love of winter competition is here, and you stand a chance to win one of six 5,000 Rand weekly prizes and a chance at the 100,000 Rand grand prize. Now, all you have to do is share a picture and recipe of your Rhodes Quality winter dish with that hashtag for the love of winter on the Rhodes Quality Facebook or Instagram page. Now, entries are open until the 16th of August, right? That's next week. And after that, celebrity chef Zola Nene will pick the two winning entries who will battle it out for the grand prize. Remember, T's and C's do apply. You can find them on RhodesQuality.com. Zola Nene. Yes. So good Ooh, I know, to see so you. good, right? Look at the, the buns. Once they bake, they look like that. Serve them with more chakalaka, Rhodes quality chakalaka, and that one is hot and spicy, just for you. Fantastic. I, I was meaning you, great to see you, but great to see the buns as well. It's yeah. with the keyword Rhodes, 233728. <laughs>Um, a delicious sounding chakalaka to a, delicious right. chakalaka oh to a God, hot performance still coming up. Taryn Lamb is still Absolutely. here and she's about to perform her final and last song here on the Express Show after the break. <laughs> <laughs>
En niet meer aan mij denk niet eens net te veel voor mij Is dit nu heel voorbij Zal hier de problemen Zal hier de doel voort Is wat ik hoor hoe je me sê Dat jy voor eeuwig saam wil wees En die man daar is recht Is nie, is net te veel vir my Is dit nou heel voorbij Sal hier de doel voort Vier woorde ek rei en verloor De tekst lief vir jou Welcome back to a beautifully sunshiny Wednesday. And uh, of course, I think half of that sunshine brought on by the lovely lady next to me, oh, Taryn Lamb. She's Thank been entertaining you. us. Thank you for the music. It's been, uh, as always, a beautiful journey to share with you. The brand new album, Mol Urio, is out now. Uh, and now that it is out, I'm sure yes. you've got lots of requests and people just wanting you to perform all over the place. What does the rest of 2018 hold in store for you? Loads. I'm busy with a show called The Contract at the moment. I play <gasps> a mentor in it. Oh my word. And we're filming that. We started last week filming that. I'm doing album promo. I'm performing with Il Divo when they come to Cape Town. There's a whole lot of things going on, but I will post it on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. That's amazing. And, and I also have two albums here that I really want to give away to two people that are just, that would love the album. Well, so. let's send them over to your, to your Facebook page. So you, what, what, what's your Facebook handle? It's Tad and Lamb, and I'm just going to make up a question, and then I'll post it after the show. How about that? Listen, <laughs> we've been very proud and privileged to be part of your journey. Do you Thank have you. A, a message to all the, the women out there for Women's Month? Women's Day is, of course, tomorrow. Tomorrow, yes. And I, I just want to say to the beautiful women of South Africa and all over the world, be who you are. Mwah. Thank you so, so much. The last song that you're performing for us is... Vier Woorde. Oh, can't wait to hear it. Taryn Lamb, ladies and gentlemen, the stage Thank is yours. Thank you so much. Vier Woorde, jy kry en verloor, dit ek sien vir jou. Ek sleef vir jou. Jy gesê, dit is vir eeuwig, maar waar is jy nou? Sal hier dit blind raak, as om jyne saam te sien Hoe jy haar hande vat in jyne En nie meer aan my Dink nie, dis net te veel vir my Is dit nou heel voorbij Sal hier de blind raak Sal hier de doel voort Is wat ek hoor hoe jyne sê Dat jy vir eeuwig saam wil wees En die man te aan is recht Is nie, is net te veel vir my is dit nou heel voorbij? Sal jy hier de doel voort? Vier woorde jy kry en verloor De dag sê vir jou Dis so makkelijk gesê Is 
wat ik dit voor jou moet zeggen. Hoe ik nog elke dag bleef denken dat onze liefde zou kunnen. Is dit te veel voor mij? Is dit nou heel voorbij? Zal hier de stom raak? Zal hier de lamp worden? Als om weg te loop van jou. Is wat ik opstaan en die ochtend in moet zoeken en roep naar jou. Is dit te veel voor mij? Is dit nou heel voorbij? Is dit nou heel voorbij? Jij het gezin is verheerlijk, maar waar is geen 